Good afternoon, everyone. Is everyone ready to start the meeting? I want to start off by welcoming all of uh, everyone that's here from Longboat Key. Some of the faces I know, some are new. Maggie, it's always good to see you. Um, it's going to be, I, I'm so glad I was just telling uh, B.J. Bishop that we need to meet more often. So maybe that will happen. I don't know. We'll see. At any rate, I'm going to go ahead and start the invocation uh, by Commissioner Bellamy with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Yes. You can handle it. No, the prayers first. The prayers first. Yes. I'm sorry. Always. God first. As we bow. Father, we stretch our hands to you. No other help we know. We ask you not to withdraw yourself from us, but we would not which, know which way to go. We ask you to come upon this meeting right now, dear Heavenly Father, touch even every mind, body, and soul that's here, and their family, their loved ones, and their people of their concern. And we just ask you to continue to place a hedge of protection over all of us, over our community, our county, and all our responsibilities. Touch this meeting whatever our goals and the things that we are trying to get accomplished. And we ask you to be a part of it. We ask you to guide us in the direction that you would want us to go and continue to keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and, and justice for all. Thank you very much. God always comes before the pledge. Um, one thing to mention to our uh, people that are here with us today from LBK, uh, when you go to speak, if you would hit the button on your microphone, it will um, make it live so you can be heard better, and just speak close to the microphone. Um, we tend to forget that, and every time we do, we get people coming in going, we can't hear you. So anyway, with that being said, I really am excited to have this workshop. It's always nice to see Longboat Key. Um, we'll go ahead and start with the agenda items. Uh, the first one, Town and Manatee County Collaboration Efforts. Who wants to handle that between our administrators here? I'll be happy to. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. I'll be happy to jump in from the town's perspective. I think the way the agenda is set up, the first two items will be presenting some background information for both commissions and I'm sure our commission may weigh in or, or have some discussion they'd like to have but uh, I'll be presenting the first item and then our public works director Isaac Brown will be presenting the second item so uh, I'm going to say um, from time to time next slide I guess is the, is the way we're going to do it you see the slide that's up there now Th this is really designed to be uh, a discussion or an update about some of the things that we're working on now together and, uh, and a little bit historically, but also uh, more recently. And so if you could, uh, next slide. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> All right, so uh, I don't plan to present uh, a lot about the OPAGA report. I think both commissions are aware of a legislative priority that the town had uh, over the past couple of years to have an independent body look at the challenges of being in two counties. We're one of four cities in the state that are split by county lines, makes us a little bit unique. We're the largest of the four, and so the town has been talking about that for a number of years before I came to the town and when I was with Sarasota County, that was a discussion, and I know it's been a discussion here before with the town, but last year, OPAGA did take up that study. They did um, produce a report that we received uh, earlier this year. Our commission did discuss that at their last strategic planning retreat in October, and you know the focus that, um, that we're working under is to really work with the county and, and ultimately both counties on ways to collaborate and partner and try to really focus on that um, as we're looking out over the next year or so, the next couple of years, if you will. Uh, and so what I thought would be helpful is to kind of highlight some of the things that we're doing. We all know the numbers. Um, Longbow Key doesn't have a public school on the, on the 
islands, so we're significant from our taxpayers' purpose, not the town, but the taxpayers significantly contribute to the school board. They also significantly contribute to both county governments, and we provide most of the services ourselves on the island, pretty uh, full service, self-sufficient. So next slide, please. Um, so really I want to focus more on what have we been working on together and then as we think about other opportunities, we know we've been a long-term wholesale water and sewer customer of the county. That's a very positive relationship. I know our public works directors here and will tell you that they have a great working relationship with Manatee County staff in that way. You know, it's an area we don't, you know, we, we receive positive feedback from our residents. We don't have a lot of complaints in that area and, and the arrangement seems to be working uh, very well. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the county and the town agreed to a law enforcement agreement related to Greer Island support. Uh, it's a county a property, a county park, and uh, we provide law enforcement services there. And so we have this annual agreement that's uh, a contribution of $60,000 to the town. And then we report back periodically, I think it's every quarter to uh, the county on the services that we provide there on that property. And we appreciate that. You can see from the pictures that it's a very popular area. Uh, it's uh, especially during holidays and summer uh, events and spring break and whatnot, uh, significant boater activity we deal with and our commission deals with other things that come out of that like noise complaints and uh, other things that we, we try to work through. Um, but uh, we do appreciate that annual support. Uh, this past year with Red Tide, I want to especially thank, I know uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge and uh, Dr. Scott Hopes uh, came out and visited with me a couple of times on the island. We actually looked at conditions related to Red Tide. And not only did you help with uh, the Manatee County portion of the beach cleanup, but you also went further and took on responsibility to clean up the entire island, even on the Sarasota County side. And so that was kind of worked out between the DEP and uh, Sarasota County and Manatee County, and we very much appreciated that that high level service. You had uh, provided us drone support, and you provided us uh, dumpsters for our residents, and you provided us the cleanup, uh, and the and the staff was great to work with. So, so thank you for that. Uh, hopefully, we're not dealing with that again next year. Um, and uh, and but uh, we we uh, really appreciate the work uh, in 2021 towards Red Tide. Uh, we've had meetings about um, Greer Island and Jewfish Key related to all the boat activity and the challenges with policing that and monitoring that. And so, you know, we understand the, the county commission has supported sheriff funding uh, to increase uh, marine um, support in that area. So we're very thankful for that and the coordination that occurs with um, our law enforcement, the Longboat Key Police Department and the sheriff, and then your support through financial assistance to fund those efforts with the county sheriff. And then we're uh, working with your staff on signage on Greer Island. We have, uh, I would say, uh, a, a, a mishmash of signs, you know, probably 10 or more that are different signs that have been put up by different entities over time. And so we've been working with Charlie Hunziker to, you know, work together to kind of clean up those signs and end up with a smaller number of signs, but that they say what they need to say both from a town and a county perspective. And one of the things that we're looking at in that area is if you see in the top picture, you know, we call that the spit, that's over there by Land's End, uh, where, you know, where the Michael Saunders and Tom Mayer property is, where it's really the wraparound of sand that has come through the past and has built up there. We did an emergency removal of some, uh, some of that sand over this past year just to keep the lagoon open because it was starting to close off where that dock is. Um, but we're also working on another project, uh, which is going to be, it's called a spit management plan where we're going through the permitting now that we'll be able to, on a regular basis, take that sand and bring it back around to the beach where it, where it came from. And I'll touch on that a little bit more. But we're also trying to create a small section within there that is a, I would say like a kayak paddleboard landing area so that there's plenty of space for the boats, but there's also a safe place um, because we have a lot of uh, active kayakers uh, in uh, Whitney Plaza, there's a business there that uh, the Happy Paddler that rents out and do, does tours and one of their stops is on Greer Island. And so we're looking to have a safe place there. So we're working with Charlie 
and the county staff on that. So I wanted to mention that as well. Um, next slide. Uh, really appreciate the support this year on our beach nourishment. We, we, we feel very fortunate. We placed about a million cubic yards of sand over about a five to six month period of time on the island. And that was in the in round numbers in the mid $30 million range. Um, but uh, as we've talked to the county over the past couple of years, the north end of the island is the most erosional part of Longboat Key. You know, because of you know, the north to south flow, because of the past that's there. And so, you know, there was concern of what do we need to do to protect some of the structures in that area and on the north end of the island. And so we have uh, constructed, and you can see in the upper right picture, we've constructed five rock groins and then we backfilled them with sand. And so the bottom pictures, you can actually see the sand that's now filled in around those structures. Now with some of the activity over the last couple months, some of that sand is gonna move around. So some of the ends of the rock groins are exposed, but you, in the bottom left picture, you can see the tips of the rock groins, uh, uh, two of them from this, with this angle. But we did um, significantly place some sand there. The county, you guys participated in that. Uh, it was uh, $2.69 million, for, and that dealt with the groins that were placed directly on Greer Island and the sand that was placed in that area. So as part of our overall $30-plus million project, you guys did participate uh, with that, per helping us protect the north end. So I wanted to highlight that, and thank you for that. Um, next slide. One of the things that we've been talking about, and this is really important to the north end, they're really excited to see some... Uh, Improvements there from a safety standpoint as you come onto the island. Uh, so this is on the north end in the Manatee County portion. Uh, you come to Broadway, which is one of our larger uh, beach access areas. And there, there's a little bit of an incline there um, going from the east to the west side. And it's a hard place for um, residents and the public to cross. And part of the Barrier Island traffic study identified that as a roundabout, a future roundabout. And so from a safety standpoint and a traffic flow standpoint, entering the town standpoint, the town's been uh, very interested in advancing that project. Uh, our approach typically with the Florida Department of Transportation, because this is a state road, you know, we found that sometimes because of all the other priorities in the region, uh, our priorities are, you know, we have one vote on the MPO, and sometimes it takes uh, a lot of effort to try and get something funded. And, and if we're talking about 2045, you know, that's a long time away, so we try to, you know, advance it. And the way we do that is to locally try to fund the design so that we can get it more ready so that the state would then be able to pick it up at some point in their five-year work plan. And so that's what the town is doing. We've had some discussions with the county about uh, a, a willingness to maybe partner in the design portion of that work. And so that's something we're interested in, in, in advancing further. But I just wanted to kind of, from a big picture standpoint, show you where that was at and what we're trying to do there. The, the design phase we've estimated is about $300,000. And so that's an important initiative for us. Uh, next one, next slide, please. And then here's just a couple of uh, other priorities that our town is trying to figure out. You know, with ARPA, we received a little over or will receive a little over three and a half million dollars. So $3.6 million with ARPA. I know the county's received a lot more. You have a lot bigger responsibility. Our commission uh, decided to um, set aside the ARPA funds for two big initiatives, not, not to fully fund them, but to help us start to address these two issues. So 100% of the ARPA funds in the town are gonna go towards flooding and drainage, and then the cost to advance uh, this redundant subaqueous wastewater line, which you're going to hear about after this presentation. Uh, Mr. Brownman will go into more detail. And so we are, you know, interested in advancing some discussions with the county with, with whether it's your ARPA funds or infrastructure dollars or other utility dollars. Are there opportunities? Because th this is our subaqueous water line ties into the Manatee County Treatment Plant, and we're in that partnership on that part of it. The flooding and drainage issues mostly, not 100%, but mostly are in the north end in the Manatee County portion. And as we try to figure out what we need to do there, uh, you know, are there ways that we can look at doing some things together, especially with some of these uh, new funding opportunities that are coming out there? And so I just want to kind of close that with that kind of comment. And then the last slide, 
just kind of reinforces that from a staff standpoint, you know, we're going to continue to reach out to your county administrator, your staff, and kind of look at things that maybe you're doing or we're doing that we can work on together. And some of them are infrastructure related, and some of them may just be, you know, you guys have a great program for parks. You know, and when we look at that, we, you know, how you do the virtual stuff and someone can actually visit your parks and not actually go there, you know, so, you know, are there little things like that? Or as we think about GIS and we think about some other things that, you know, you guys have a more robust system in place than we do. And so we're just really interested in trying to look at all those things to figure out how we may want to partner and work together on some of that. And so uh, with that, I would then, you know, turn it over to any of our commissioners who may have any other comments and then any questions the commission has. I'm Diane Vollmer, Agenda Coordinator for Manage County. Savannah Cobb, Deputy Town Clerk. <coughs> Deborah Williams, Longbow Key Commissioner, District 4. Misty Servia, Manatee County Commissioner, District 4. Oh, 4 4. Oh. BJ Bishop, at large Commissioner, Longboat Key. Oh my gosh. Nice. Carol Whitmore, Manatee County Commissioner, at large. <laughs> Did y'all do this on purpose? No. Okay. Yeah, I, I know. I think they did. James? Uh, James Satcher, Manatee County Commissioner, District 1. Tom Harmer, Town Manager, Longbow Key. Uh, Scott Hopes, Manatee County Administrator. That's cool. I think I'm the one that actually knows everyone, but uh, Kevin Van Austin Bridge, County Commissioner, District 3. Penny Gold, County Commissioner, District 2. Reggie Bellamy, County Commissioner, District 2. <laughs> George Cruz, Manatee County, at large. It's not fair. Vanessa Ball, County Commissioner, District 5. I don't think we have a District 5 in Longboat Key. BJ, you might have to be mine, District 5. I can do both. Okay. <laughs> All right. Bill Clegg, County Attorney. Ken Schneier, Longboat Key, Commissioner, District 3, and Mayor. And we do have a District 5, but uh, Maureen oh. is not, wasn't able to Yay. make it today. So. Okay. Gosh, Diane, they could have been next to Mayor. <laughs> Um, all right, I, I did have a, a couple of questions, Tom, that I, I wanted to know about. Um, beach access, you had mentioned there, I guess it was what I call Beer Can Island, that that's, you know, open to the public. Do you, are there any other beaches uh, besides up there uh, where you, I don't know the name of the road, I'm not, it's not my district, uh, where the roundabout, where you're talking about there, is that a, a public beach as well, or where are they, the public beaches? Yeah, yes, so... We have 12 public beach accesses on the island, uh, and, and the, at the north end, we have the biggest public beach access points, and Isaac can correct me, but if you, so North Shore Road is the first road when you come over the bridge and you can make a right, right. and go down there, and there's a beach access there with public parking, and then there's parking along Firehouse when you make a left to go down to Broadway. Broadway is where the roundabout is, and there's a okay. public beach parking area at Broadway, in that section there is where the most parking spots are on the island. I, I don't it's a couple hundred of them, I think. Yeah. Almost, okay, it's almost, almost maybe we have a couple hundred overall. And so then we have 12 total. So as you go down the island, uh, it's, they're not evenly spaced over time. I'm sure they were acquired by the town. And they, they may hold 15 cars, 20 cars, and they may hold six or seven cars. Just depends on how big the right-of-way is there that goes to the beach. But every one of those points has public parking for the beach. Okay. And the biggest one is at the very end on the Mantee County side by between North Shore and Broadway. And, and I wanted to, to next bring up, you mentioned the roundabout and the MPO. And I will tell you that we've got some pretty strong members on the MPO. Um, Misty Servia serves on it, uh, Kevin Von Austin Bridge, and myself. Um, so you're not alone. And, and we can help to try to get this roundabout moved up. I, I understand the need for it. Um, and I was going to ask you if there were any federal dollars that you were getting, but I think you're going to put them to the two projects yes, that you yes, mentioned. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it's about 300000 did you say, for, for the, the design? For the design, yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. All right. And um, 
I guess that's it for me at this point. Commissioner Whitmore. Um, Maureen Merrigan called me and we talked because she, she said she wasn't going to be able to make the, the meeting commissioner. Uh, and we talked. I, I, what I'm blown away is to see those groins because I've been around since mm -hmm. a former commissioner sued Lombok yes. Key. And uh, we had that. to drop this project. We lost almost all our beach. But I'm shocked that those groins got covered with sand and how stabilized the beach is. So it's kind of cool to see it actually worked. So congratulations to you. And the roundabout is, and Kevin will tell you also, is a major safety issue. As you all know, it, it turns right on a curve, and it's very, very dangerous. So um, Maureen had talked to me, and she had told me actually the amount that you were looking for. And I talked to Scott, and I um, talked to Jan this morning. You know, uh, they would be wanting half from the county, and that's 150. So uh, again, I was looking about where we would get it, and we always have our reserves that have about 1.2 or 3 million in it. So maybe we could all talk about that because you know, once your budget set, then you don't you're going to take it somewhere else. But this is what we can do, whatever our discretionary balance. So maybe we can all talk about that in the future. Um, Beer Can Island. I, I actually wrote the spit off where uh, Tommy Mayer's house is. And I, I like what you said about that access because manatees, manatees go in that inlet mm -hmm. to mate and just to hang out and be safe. And again, we're talking about parking and I know some of you, I think some of you have written us letters or emails regarding not allowing any boat parking on that spit of a island. But maybe we could just do it so that uh, it kind of protects Tommy Mayer's docks. And and again, um, the south part of that spit island where that could be manatee crossing, don't park or something, or, or you know, kayak, whatever. And you can talk to Commissioner Van Ostenbridge about that, but maybe that would be a way to compromise. Because right now, I, know, I understand, I drive by it all the time, and people are almost climbing up on his dock. Mm -hmm. So I get that. So maybe we could figure out a better way to do it. But I'm really impressed with the groins. I never thought it would work. So congratulations. Thank you. Can you get that commissioner, the past commissioner, to look at those pictures? <laughs> yeah, I know. Whitmore, can you do that? You can send them to them. Because I, I know exactly who she's talking about. And we hear from them quite often, actually. Yeah. So that's why I found that interesting as well. <laughs> <laughs> na, 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 na. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Um, I don't see any other comment cards. I do have one more. I'm sorry, where? Oh, please, Mayor, go ahead. Yeah, just to emphasize two things. Uh, first of all, on the Broadway uh, roundabout idea, um, if you haven't driven there recently, check it out because it is, it's not only that it's a busy intersection, but it has pretty um, steep. steep turns coming into it, especially from the south. And we did have one pedestrian death there about 18 months ago. It was a very sad story about an elderly man trying to get over for his morning beach walk. So that is a, a point of big interest for us. And the other thing just to emphasize is, and I know Tom had the number up of the contribution by Manatee County to the, uh, the Greer Island part of the, the, uh, uh, the sand renourishment and reconstruction job. That was a real breakthrough of the relationship between Manatee County and Longbow Key after years and years of maybe talking about it, maybe not talking about it, but actually getting you know, your help in, in bringing that project to fruition, and it looks great. So just thank you again. Um, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I just wanted to touch on a few of the issues that Mr. Harmer touched on. Um, and first start off by saying that I, I think that the relationship, I've certainly worked hard on my relationship with the mayor and Tom Harmer, uh, and I think that our relationship the county and Longboat Key has has improved quite a bit over the last year. I think that the, the lines of communication are much more open probably than they were before. Um, and so I think that's a, that's a positive thing and hopefully it continues. Um, out on Beer Can Island, uh, the signs, that's kind of an easy thing that we're, we're working on. And, and the way that came about is the island is constantly moving and shifting and so are the where the sea oats grow. And so we had a couple of layers of signs that had been encumbered by sea oats and growth over time. And instead of removing previous sets of signs, people just put a new set in front of it. So it just sort of was like a, a layer. Um, but we can get that cleaned up pretty easily. Um, and I do support the idea of not allowing motorized vehicles inside of the lagoon. 
And I think that will go a ways toward, you know, towards helping with the noise issue over there. It won't eliminate the noise issue, of course, but I think that'll go a ways towards helping with the noise issue uh, if we push those boats a little further out. I would like to see um, if we're going to maintain the entrance to the lagoon, what is that going to look like? Because it's pretty narrow now. So is the, the current sort of exposed dry land of the spit going to be pushed back closer to the bridge? Will, will the opening be widened? Because if, if that happens, then that will, of course, push boats and people further away from, from the private property there. Uh, and, you know, I would support that. I think that would be helpful. I don't want to go too far with it, but, you know, if we can push it back a little bit, I think that'll help. It'll help to keep people off of docks as well um, and keep them from accessing private property. That said, that location is a public access point. It has always been a public access point, and I will always support it being, you know, being that. Um, it's sort of a rite of passage in Manatee and Sarasota County to go out to spend time out on Beer Can Island. That, that's what you do. Um, that said, you have to be respectful of people around you. You have to be safe. Um, we've spoken with the sheriff, and this board has approved giving the sheriff, funding the sheriff a new patrol boat and three additional Marine deputies. And the purpose, the main purpose of that funding was to patrol the north end of Longboat Key and the south end of Anna Maria Island, essentially beer can and Jewfish. Um, I've also spoken with the sheriff about the times that the sh essentially the shifts run out there. So, you know, before it was people would show up, you know, the, they would, I don't know, they would work like a nine to five. So at like four o'clock, they would head back, you know. And in the summertime, it doesn't get dark until nine, right? <laughs> And nobody's really getting drunk till four o'clock. Let's be honest. Um, so nobody's having a good time until four o'clock. So um, we're hoping that you know we're going to coordinate next summer with with LBK, and they have one boat that patrols the whole island. We're hoping that they'll spend you know their sort of their morning shift on the north end, and then they can head to the south end, and then MSO can come in and a shift that starts at say two or three o'clock in the afternoon and runs until eight o'clock at night, um, because the, the times that I have been out there. Uh, because you know, when you're serving the public, you have to sacrifice and go out to places like Longboat Key and Beer Can Island on the weekends, you know, reconnaissance. Um, and uh, so at the times that I've been out there, when when law enforcement is around, things are calm, you know, and and it's all right. Um, no one wants their vessel boarded, obviously. But as soon as the cat's away, you know, the mice start to play. So I think by, by switching the shifts up, adding the boat, adding the additional deputies, and having them out there later in the evenings on the weekends, I think it's going to go a long way um, to help you with your noise issues and the behavioral issues. And the sheriff's not out there looking for trouble either. We, we had discussions about that. You know, we, we don't want underage drinking. We don't want excessively loud music. And everybody keep their bathing suits on, you know, I mean, kind of the basics, you know. Um, but we still want everyone to have a good time. Um, so I, hopefully that will go a long way for, towards that. The roundabout... Uh, that is actually going to be on uh, an agenda for a meeting at the beginning of January for this board to vote on. Uh, so I have done what I can to, you know, promote the, the roundabout, and I'm at least bringing it to our board, and ultimately it'll be up to my colleagues to decide if they want to, to fund 50% of the roundabout or not. You're in very good hands because Commissioner Baugh uh, did not tell you that she is the chair of the MPO as of this year. Um, so I think if we can get it through the county commission and you know, we can get it, the design funded. I think construction at that point can be fast-tracked and probably be easier, and that's probably the, the lady to get it done for you. So, um, sure. and then my last point would be ARPA funding. I, I'm actually thrilled on a personal note that you're using ARPA funding uh, for that because I feel strongly that if money is going to be just printed by the federal government and it'll be placed, the debt placed on future generations, whatever you spend the money on should be enjoyed by future generations, and that's, you know, that would be one of those projects that would fit that. So that's all. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Um, Dr. Hopes and then Commissioner Satcher. C Commissioner Van Osterbridge covered most of what I was going to say, but I was going to uh, reiterate that uh, he is pretty deliberate at trying to catch people with loud music and things like that. And, and one time when we took my boat out there, we didn't see the loud music and everyone had their clothes on. 
And I said, what are you looking for? And he said, but see, there's a sheriff's boat's coming around the corner there. Uh, and they were. Uh, but uh, as someone who uh, bicycles on Longboat Key, uh, that roundabout can't come fast enough because when you go to cross the street up there to then head south, it is a very scary crossing for anyone. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, it is on the uh, first agenda uh, in January. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Satcher. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to uh, just express some appreciation for everyone coming out. I know it's a drive, um, and so I'm glad you're here and uh, good to meet everyone. Um, so, and this question may be for Dr. Hopes or uh, for Mr. Harmer. Um, talking about the, you know, just directly addressing the elephant in the room. So, when it comes to this study and then, um, you know, negotiations, what what do we see so far on that? Where are we at on that? And then I'll have a follow-up after. Oh, Madam Chair, are you referring to the OPAGA study regarding the bi-county uh, situation with Lombok Key? Yes, sir. Um, they have completed the study. It's the first time they've actually taken a, a research and analytical approach to documenting both the status and the the three scenarios that that were available, uh, so that you have quantified data. My understanding, and I think other com I think commissioners have had conversations, uh, is that the sense I have is the legislature is sort of leaving it to the two counties and the town of Longboat Key uh, to to continue whatever dialogue you may want to have around the situation uh, should, my understanding is should the counties and the town come forward with a proposal, then at such time the legislature would take it up. Uh, but aside from a, a collaboration and a, a, a mutual agreement or desire to change, uh, that it would be sort of left where they have it. A study's been completed. The data is available for consideration. Did you have anything to add to that, Tom? No, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Hope's comments. The the actual moving of county lines requires a special act of the state legislature, and so um, I think the purpose of this study was really to have an independent body look at the impacts and and the and the request was to look at the challenges of being in two counties you know because you could you could talk about moving from one county to another or moving the line which you know at some point maybe is uh, is is where a discussion might go between the two counties and the town but you know there's other pieces to that study which relate to you know the, there is some cost differential that you could argue um, but there's also the everyday challenges of having two supervisor of elections, two property appraisers, two tax collectors, two sheriffs, and you know how do we work through all of those things in a cooperative way with both counties? You know we have, you know about, about two thirds of the island is in Sarasota County, and about a third is in Manatee County. That's you know almost land wise and population wise, um, and we're pretty self sufficient. You know we don't have right now we don't have a library on the island. We don't have a jail. We don't have public schools. We don't have we provide our own law enforcement. We have mutual aid agreements and whatnot. So knowing that we're kind of a a donor uh, island to um, to the counties just by nature of the tax base out there. How do we all benefit from working together? Is kind of where the commission, I think, has looked to me and said, advanced discussions with the county on cooperative and collaborative things we can do together to help the Manatee County residents and on the Sarasota side, the, the Sarasota residents, and that helps the whole island and both counties. I mean, if Longboat Key is successful, I think the counties are successful. I think we're an important part of the community and the tax base. Absolutely, I would agree with that statement. Um, so some of my, um, you know, I'll leave off some of the other questions that I had because they might be um, more productive, you know, privately. Um, but I'll just say that, you know, you can you can find yourself in two different situations. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes in negotiations, 
you need to know what the uh, a re the real issue is. Sometimes people don't want to talk about the real issue, so I would just encourage um, that we get to whatever you know. If Longbow Key, we want you guys happy, you know, and uh, we want you glad. And I think you, I think Manatee County is the place to be. And so um, we want to get you know that lower that southern part of the island. I think that it'd be very reasonable and in their best interest to move into Manatee County. Um, or if they want to stick with the status quo, <laughs> I'm okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> if they want to stick with the status quo, I understand that it's the way it's been for a long time. Um, but if there's serious consideration going in the other direction, um, I, I want to hit that head on and do what it takes to change that conversation. Um, unless here's the other thing with the negotiation. Sometimes you don't have, it. sometimes the decision's already been made and, uh, you know, uh, Senator Gruters, he seems to be pretty deliberate. Um, and so I was surprised to see that he brought this forward and disappointed, um, you know, as someone that a lot of Manatee County residents had voted for. And um, so if the decision's already been made, then, uh, you know, then that'd be a different uh, negotiation altogether, a different situation altogether. And I realize I might have, uh, you know, but I'd rather just face it head on. We're not going to have another chance where we're all in here and we can all speak freely. And uh, especially, you know, the other commissioners on my board, I can't get their opinion on some of these things, um, except for right here, right now, when it's addressed and is a public meeting. So it might be a little awkward to say out loud, but I'd rather, you know, hopefully... Um, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll restate my, my, uh, my preference, you know, is that we look seriously into Longboat Key becoming part of Manatee County so that you guys don't have to worry about having two supervisor of elections, um, you know, and two different appraisers. And we do whatever adjustments need to take place to make that worth your while, you know, because there's going to be something out there that makes it worth your while. And so I, I think we need to look into that seriously and go for it. Um, but if that, you know, that's my preference. If that's not a possibility, um, then I hope that we can, uh, you know, keep things, keep the status quo, except for the fact that I want you guys happy. I like happy constituents. I like happy voters. Um, so, you know, I want to move towards that direction as we move forward. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, it's going to be Commissioner Bishop, Dr. Hopes, and then I'm after him. But I, I just do, I do want to make the comment before we go to Commissioner Bishop that, um, you know, Joe Gruters has been a very dear, close friend of mine for many, many years. And you can rest assured there was some heated conversation between he and I when this came up. And, and everybody knows that. I mean, that's not a secret. You know, if you know me, you know I'm going to take it head on. And, and I will tell you that, um, you know, he feels similarly in some ways to what Commissioner Satcher said in that he just is trying to see if there is a better solution, whatever the case may be. Um, but I also know that, you know, he doesn't want to hurt either county, Sarasota or Manatee in any way. So if we can come up with a plan between the two counties to help Longboat Key be more successful and happier, that's what Senator Gruders wants to see. And I would agree with that. That's what I'd like to see. So he's not a bad guy here in this uh, evaluation, other than he didn't let us know that he had done that. Shame on him, and he knows that. But, um, you know, he really is a good guy. And by the way, if you look at some of the maps that are coming up, uh, some parts of Manatee County, namely Lakewood Ranch, uh, might have Senator Gruder's back. So I'm not going to say a bad word ever about him. Just say it. Uh, Commissioner Bishop. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. M Mr. Satcher, I, um, <clears throat> I have a, a few more decades on you, so, so <laughs> there, there's the first advantage. Sure. And, and if Manatee County had had a little foresight back in the 1920s, we wouldn't be having this right. discussion. So I would say, you know, let's pay attention to long-term issues <laughs> because <laughs> long-term issues have long-term impacts, and that's the impact that happened to Longboat Key. The fact there was hardly anybody out there in the 1920s is, is also another part of the story. Um, most of you know back where I come from, which is Loudoun County, Virginia, where I served as the mayor of Leesburg, Virginia, for a number of years. 
You're from Virginia yes. too. Oh my! Born and raised. Me too. Not wow. far from you. Wow, I feel better already. Um, <laughs> but in Virginia, we we fight constant battles between cities, counties, and towns. And the way that we as towns in Virginia is the largest town in Virginia, except for Blacksburg, and they're only big because they get all those students. Um, but the only way that we can fight to get equitable care in our towns is to threaten annexation. So every 10, 12, 15 years, we throw an annexation battle out there. And suddenly the county remembers that we have our own police and we have our own fire and rescue and we take care of all of our own things and that the county hasn't been giving us any money, despite the fact our taxpayers pay them the same amount that the unincorporated people do. So the good news for us is this board um, your commission, since Kevin and Carol have been here, are very concerned about taking excellent care of the taxpayers of Manatee County. Those taxpayers in Manatee County, which pay a lot of school board taxes for all 33 children that we don't have a single school for on Longboat Key. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of money that comes over that bridge to you all, and we just want a little bit of it back on a regular basis. The other thing that happens in Virginia, and I, which gets really dicey, is they have this little chart in Richmond, and it says for every one dollar that goes to Richmond, you get 60% back, you get 30% back, and and, you know, we're not looking for percentages. We're just looking for you all to treat Longboat Key taxpayers the same that you treat the other taxpayers of your unincorporated areas who don't have service like the Longboat taxpayers do. Dr. Hopes? <coughs> So I, I think the important thing about the study is, is at least it provides a basis for a cost-benefit analysis, uh, for starters. Um, uh, secondly, based on Mr. Harmer's comments, perhaps the chair would invite the Longboat Key uh, commissioners to our groundbreaking of our fabulous East County Library, um, and we could certainly consider a, a, a West County Island library in exchange for two-thirds of Longboat Key. Um, <laughs> since, uh, and, it, and it's an impressive library. It's got an observation deck. It's got, <laughs> it, I mean, you will like it on Longboat Key. Uh, and, and you're right, uh, you know, prior to, I think it was 1926, uh, Longboat Key was Manatee County. Um, and and somewhat of a desolate beach, but that's that's short sightedness, uh, perhaps in, in a way. But uh, uh, I think you've seen, at least in this past year, the the board of county commissioners committed uh, to to doing all that we can uh, for for not just the Manatee County mm -hmm. Longboat Key residents, but the Longboat Key residents. So, uh, and and I have every expectation that the commission's commitment will will continue to ensure that the taxpayers do get back. I'm no longer on the school board, and this Board of County Commissioners has no control uh, over over what the school board does and does not do in exchange for those, those tax dollars. But with regards to all of the services that we can afford your residents, uh, we, are, we are doing the best to, to meet those needs. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, and I'm next on the board. Um, I guess, Tom, this might be for you. I don't know. Maybe not, or might be the mayor. I'm not sure. Whoever wants to help me here. Just trying to get my arms around this. In the paperwork that I'm looking at here online, it says uh, the school district tax revenue. Manatee County is $13.9 million. Sarasota County is $28.7 million. And, Tom, did I hear you say there are 33 kids? At Longboat Key that go to school? There, no, that's in the Manatee County I mean, side. That's, all right, that's what I was going to yeah, ask. There's that's another 30, uh, yeah, I think it's 38 students on this Sarasota side. So it's a little over 70 students total on the island that go to public schools. Okay, well, that's what I was trying to get my arms around because I, that's a lot of money for 
I think it's like eight hundred and fifty thousand yeah. per student, Ooh, Madam Chair. Yeah. For, for Sarasota, yeah. for Sarasota, yeah. for those of us that are paying Apongo attention. Yeah, that. Well, let me ask you this, uh, just out of curiosity, and and I know this is probably a state thing, not a a local government thing, but um, you know, is it, you talked to Joe about you know Manatee County and Sarasota County, but did you have has anybody actually spoken about what might be able to to be done? For Lombok Key on the taxes, the school district. Sorry, guys, I know you're hearing this. On the taxes, <laughs> on the school side. Um, I'm just, I'm just curious on that. I got your KBO. One, one answer might be Longboat County, so that we would have oh. our own. <laughs> you know, we haven't really explored that fully, but that would stop that would be all funding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. That's a direct good answer. That's a good one. Okay, so. Yes, sir. Could I you? will say in all fairness, now, the school district of Manatee <laughs> County does provide a school on Anna Maria Island for less than 100 students. And we're going to keep it. Yes, yes. I don't know. Let me write that down. No, <laughs> no I'm just, I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out, that is an awful lot of money for, you know, only 70-some students. So that's what I was looking at. I, I was amazed. I didn't realize it was that much money. That's why I was asking. But let me, the, so let me, let me say yes, one please. exciting thing is every time there has been a school bond referendum from either county, Longboat residents always overwhelmingly support it because yes. we believe desperately how important education is to this state. I did not support the referendum. I know you, As didn't, everyone su in this I room know you didn't support the last uh, one, but you've supported others. I, I have. And, and the only reason I didn't is because I think, you know, our, our teachers, their salaries shouldn't be based on a referendum. But anyway, um, so let me ask you, Tom, I guess, or Mayor, one of you, uh, public safety. And, and you had mentioned and I know that we've had this discussion before when we've talked about, you know, your supervisor of elections and, and all this being divided up in two counties. Um, but we have worked that most of that out, have we not, where you're not really looking at two counties for some of that stuff anymore, are you? Is yep. that correct? So, Madam Chair, yes for emergency management. And I think that's been a very good collaboration between the state and both counties and the town. And so when there's a declared emergency, we fall under the Sarasota County Emergency that. Operations Center yeah. during the declared emergency. Right. Understood. Uh, and so and, and everyone has signed off on that. And so that helps for when you evacuate the island or when you have reentry of the island or you're setting a curfew, we're now not splitting the town into two. And so that is that went in effect a little over a year ago, probably in the last year to two years. And it's we, we operated that way during some of the recent storms. And I think that's a good way to kind of figure out collaboration between the, like whether it's the two sheriffs, the two emergency managers, the two property appraisers, tax collectors, et cetera. How can we advance some of those? This was the first one we did. So are there other opportunities like that? And, and I, that's, I guess, why I'm asking the question, because I knew with, with um, the EOCs that that was the case. I knew that you guys were dealing directly with Sarasota on that as far as elections, you still have Manatee and yes. Sarasota, is that correct? That's correct. I wonder if there isn't some way we could do something about that, too. Why not? I realize that. But we're two counties when it comes to evacuations, too. So sometimes things can be done. It's worth looking into, is all I'm saying. I mean, we can't... If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you get the same results. you got to try and find new ways to do things. Or why are we even bothering to be here? That's how I see it. Um, all right, those were the only, let me make sure. That's the only questions I have so far. Um, Commissioner Servia and then Commissioner Whitmore. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so thank you to Commissioner Bishop. I have I made two notes of the two things that you said because you, you covered what I was going to say. And regarding the school tax, um, yes, I was going to say that Longboat Key has always very much supported the school tax because I'm guessing they like to live in an educated community. Um, you know, I don't currently have children in school right now, but I do enjoy living in a community where people are educated. What I also liked hearing from you um, is to pay attention to decisions that have long-term consequences. That is some wisdom right there. 
that we can all get behind. Um, but really why I pushed my button at the beginning was to say that, you know, in the state of Florida, we have four cities that reside within two counties. It's not unusual. In the country, we have hundreds of cities that are divided and in two counties. So it's not anything unusual or anything that we can't continue to work together and make sure that we're fulfilling everyone's needs. And so I, I just wanted to throw that out there that this is not unique. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. No, I'm Mr. Chair. Is, is it me? Is it, yeah. I don't know. Okay. I think I announced Commissioner Whitmore next after Serbia. Perhaps she didn't hear me. No, I didn't. First of all, it's legally impossible to do have uh, an election for another county in another county. But um, I want to, the trolley, I want to, I've been around long enough that I, I, I actually started the trolley years ago. It got denied by the county, and then the second try it got approved. But town, at, this is at um, quite a few years ago, but the town did not want the trolley going through it because they didn't want signage on the trolleys. So after about six months, then they asked if they could have it included, and we did it for a long time. And then we saw how expensive it was with the ridership. And I recall, and I don't know if anybody here knows, uh, the town of, oh, maybe Bill does, town of Lombok Key, years ago, ago, before I was in office, sued the uh, county because of double taxation. Remember that? And so you pay a little bit less, chartered governments pay a little bit less. That helped me as mayor of the city of Holmes Beach. But it was, um, it's, they pay a little less. Am I correct? They pay a different amount. Madam Chair, Commissioner Whitmore, I'm sorry, let me get this mic going. Um, that's before my time. That was yeah. in the 80s. Um, I was in well, that was before high school my time. or middle school. <laughs> I wasn't in office then. I, have, I, I have wasn't seen, in office then. I have seen the... Sure. The lawsuit. Oh, I lived on the island then. Though. I have seen it because we kept a record of it, and I you remember re reviewing it some years ago. And it was basically a tax equalization lawsuit. Yeah. And there were a lot of those around the state because there's a provision of the Florida Constitution that says you cannot tax municipal residents for services rendered solely to unincorporated areas. And so that lawsuit was brought. I don't think it was just Longboat Key. It may have been some other island cities as well. It may have been a number of cities. Yeah, they spearheaded it. Yeah, though. they may have. And yeah. then the, the settlement was that's why we have a um, unincorporated MSTU that covers our, our millage for just the unincorporated areas and a countywide millage that covers incorporated areas and in unincorporated areas and divides the funding of services appropriately. So that's so, the history of it. So those of you that are in office now, you'll you'll know that, that actually Lombok Key did spearhead that. I just remember reading it and, it, and it helped the chartered governments as well. So thank you for that. Ever since we've been meeting, as long as I can remember, I brought up that underground sewer line. And the last few times uh, before that we had met, you guys were doing a study and all that. And I'm glad we're on top of it now because what we feared, I feared, happened. But thank God it happened where it did and not in the middle of the bay because um, that would have been disastrous. So anything that we can do to help you, uh, that's an environmental disaster waiting to happen. So uh, I don't even know when that happened, maybe 70, 80 years ago that that was put under. I'm not sure why they did that under the bay like they did. 45 years ago. Oh, okay. All right, but I just don't understand why they went under the bay and they didn't, you know, go along like they do now and then go under the bridges. But anyway, so um, I'm glad we're working on that. And, you know, we currently have the town of Lombo, I mean, um, of Lakewood Ranch. Half of it's on Manatee County. The other half is going to be in Sarasota. Before they started building the Sarasota side, they did talk about possibly doing what Lombo Key does, and they used your example. So... Then they decided not to at the point because the Sarasota site isn't built up yet. So you never know. We may see it again. Would you mind uh, clarifying? Would you mind clarifying what we'd see again? I'm sorry, I lost the. Well, we all picture. may see where um, uh, Lakewood Ranch becomes Sarasota and Manatee County. Oh well, they'll have because they'll just, have two counties, just like okay. Town of Longboat Key. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. They actually already do. At part Waterside is in Sarasota. And some of the office park is as well. So they have two different ones. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to sort of wrap up agenda item one and, and hopefully move us on. 
Okay, well then, well then, if there's no one else on the board, <laughs> uh, I would just say that it's true. I, I did realize as I came into office that Longboat Key had not received um, due attention, I'd say, from the county, and I've worked hard to try to correct that, at least from your, your district commissioner, and I think we've come a long way, and we'll continue to build the relationship. Um, and, you know, I'll actually echo some of what Commissioner Satcher said. I was quoted in the Observer saying that it's one of the most beautiful places in the entire state, and I would love to have the entire island in my district. So uh, you should consider it. Um, but uh, and then in, in reference to the school board, um, I did a few months back speak with uh, Cynthia Saunders, the uh, superintendent, and with Mary Foreman, who is our, our district uh, representative on the school board, and spoke with them about sitting down with Tom and with the mayor um, and sort of the school district working to build the relationship as well. And then I got sick with COVID and I completely forgot about it until you all brought it up just now. Uh, but Cynthia did want to come out there and sit down with you all and talk. Um, once I explained to her um, the amount of funding that her district receives from the island um, and compared it to the referendum, which is because it's virtually equal, um, she realized the impact that LBK has on, on the island and that you're essentially a donor community. Um, and so she said, well, what do I need to do? And I said, well, I think we should probably go out and have lunch. So, and it's not the worst place to go have lunch. So um, I'll reach back out to her and Mary and, and we'll come out and pay a visit and, and start working on that relationship as well. And yes, the, the precinct on Longboat Key voted for the referendum 60%. Yeah. So very supportive of the school district. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I don't uh, have anyone else on the board. Is there anyone else that wants to make a comment? Mayor? Anything, sir? Thank you. Well, let's go to the next item, I guess. Right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Our Public Works Director, Isaac Brownman, is coming up to the podium. And this, we, this was touched on just a little bit uh, a few minutes ago, but he's going to provide an overview of our subaqueous wastewater line that runs from the island to the treatment plan in Manatee County. And we know we recently had that uh, event uh, that um, could have been much worse, but uh, we're, we're working through that. And he can give you a little bit of the history of before and after and, and, and how we're moving forward. And, and again, we, we do think this is something that we're already in partnership with you because you're our uh, treatment partner and our wholesale uh, water and wastewater provider. And, and this is uh, an issue that when I first became the town manager four years ago, the previous town manager, Dave Bullock, said, there's just one thing I want to tell you. The one thing I lose sleep over at night is this wastewater line, this single line that goes across the bay. And so um, the town did a number of things to assess and evaluate it uh, and study it. And uh, this unfortunate incident happened even with all of that work that went on. But with that said, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Brownman. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Isaac Brownman with Town of Longboat Key Public Works. And as mentioned, just going to give you a quick overview of our sub aqueous force main efforts. Next slide. Uh, just a little bit of background. Um, the town, as mentioned, is a Manatee County customer, bulk customer for water and wastewater treatment. Uh, we do have 47 lift stations on the island, just like most of Florida. We're flat, so we need to move the wastewater somehow. Uh, we have 47 lift stations island-wide that move all the wastewater to our primary lift station on a road called Gulf Bay Road. Uh, that lift station pumps all the town's effluent through the 20-inch ductile iron force main under Sarasota Bay. That force main is about two miles long under the bay and then continues a mile and a half through the mainland on the east side of the bay to the southwest regional facility uh, owned by Manatee County. Um, it is a 20-inch ductile iron force main. It was installed in 1973 and placed into service in 1975. Next slide. This is simply an image of where it crosses the bay. I know it's difficult to see from your vantage point, but uh, you can actually still see uh, a scar in the bay from where that was excavated in 1973. Next slide. So. In 2015, the town had considered uh, an emergency design build to replace or install a redundant force main uh, in 2015. Uh, but then a, an assessment was done in 2016 and 2017 uh, to assess the pipeline. And at that time, the assessment of the existing pipeline reflected uh, a result that the pipeline should last another 20 to 25 years 
and should be re-inspected every four to five years. And I'll speak a little more on that. When we did the repair, the extents of the repair, the pipe was actually in very good condition. It was a very unique fracture that, that occurred, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, the town has invested in this pipeline and in the studies to get to this point. Uh, the town funded and completed an alternatives analysis and a feasibility effort for a new pipeline. We did that in 2018 with Corolla Engineers. Uh, the town has funded the permitting of a new pipeline under Sarasota Bay. That began in January of 2020, before the leak was discovered, and is currently still in progress. We're, we're still working on getting permits from FDEP and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Next slide, please. And as you know, on June 29th of last year, uh, town and Manatee County staff were working together, and we discovered a leak on the mainland side of the pipe route about 400 feet inland from Sarasota Bay waters. As was mentioned earlier, we're very grateful. It did not occur in Sarasota Bay. There was some bad reporting early on that it did. It did not. It happened 400 feet inland of the bay on Long Bar Point property. Uh, the town very quickly hired E.T. McKenzie to perform the force main repair, which was done in about 30 hours on June 30th, uh, the next day, June 30th of 2020. Next slide, please. These are just some images of the um, haul road that had to be built through, uh, at that time, or continues to be undeveloped property. In fact, it's part of a mangrove fringe and a portion of a mitigation bank that's being worked on by Long Bar and the staging area. Uh, we did, did do extensive sampling of the bay waters using our environmental consultant, ESA, and their final conclusion, you can see in quotes there, there was no evidence of even a short-term Im impact of the sewage leak on bacteria levels in Sarasota Bay, which we're very, very grateful for. Uh, as I mentioned in the images, you can see that a temporary access road had to be constructed and a platform stabilized in order to conduct the work. And of course, as a result of this, the town did enter into a, a consent order with FDEP that was executed in February of this year, and that does include property restoration provisions uh, the image in the bottom right is simply uh, a picture of the repair effort. You can see that the leak occurred on the bottom of the pipe, which was unusual until the excavation occurred and it was realized that the pipe was actually laying on a log that was probably left there since 1973 because it was built in a marshy area. So um, we will be conducting another reassessment of the pipeline to ensure as best we can. We don't have that situation anywhere else along that run, uh, but we, are, we have several things in progress at this time to help uh, bring some peace of mind to the commission, to the residents about that pipeline. Next slide. So the town does continue to fund and work on this subaqueous force main uh, enhancement and also preservation of our system. Uh, we are very grateful to be working uh, with Manatee County as our treatment service provider. As Tom said, we have a very good working relationship and we intend to continue that. We've already made operational improvements, equipment improvements, coordination improvements as a result of the leak. Uh, between the county and the town, uh, including enhanced flow monitoring. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we're in the midst of feasibility and permitting of a, the redundant, of a redundant force main under Sarasota Bay. That was already underway prior to the leak discovery, so the town has been actively looking into how to uh, uh, replace or at least have a redundant element to this infrastructure. Uh, we are planning on another pipeline assessment this fiscal year. We're just waiting to hear back from the DEP on our proposed uh, protocol. Uh, we're also looking at the feasibility and cost of preserving the mainland portion of the force main. Uh, we've got some optimistic outlooks on that and the state has also provided some appropriations to help with that. Uh, we do continue to work on all of our island infrastructure, uh, force mains, lift stations, our wet wells, electrical systems. Uh, the town continues to invest uh, very well into the wastewater system. And obviously we're gonna continue to work to satisfy our agreed to consent order with the state. And then the final slide, next slide, is simply a snapshot from the town's capital improvement uh, program, five years. The highlighted element simply shows that the town has already programmed as planning for this ultimate redundant force main. Right now we have uh, $21 million that has been uh, identified uh, for the project. Obviously we're looking to refine that and we plan to refine that lower as we get closer as opposed to higher. So whatever efforts we can do there, but, but do it right, obviously. Um, so just wanted to share that the town has and is investing in the wastewater infrastructure. The town recently adopted new utility rates to help fund these elements, but we're also looking for opportunities to partner on these infrastructure improvements. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah, Madam Chair, if I could, just a couple of quick follow-up comments. Uh, last year, we made a state appropriation request 
uh, of $1.25 million to, uh, to match, so it's a total of $2.5 million, uh, to look at how we could address the mainland portion of the pipe, maybe through some creative relining or some other opportunities. We did receive that approval that was signed by the governor last year at the end of the legislative process. This year we have an appropriation request in for $800,000 to be added to that so we can look at the rest of that mainland for connection. Uh, and it's at 1.6 million, so our match would be 800,000. The state would be 800,000. So that's an appropriation request to be heard. Uh, it's being sponsored um, by Representative McFarland. And um, we were asked by our, some of our local delegation members if and if the county, if Manatee County was participating in the match, or if if not, why not? Uh, and I did I shared that with uh, Mr. Hopes. Um, but we're trying to take a twenty one million dollar project and figure out how do we fund it reasonably so that we can minimize those rate impacts on our users. And we still have a lot of work to do because we you know we're trying to break it up into pieces and look at funding sources. The commission said they want to set aside ARPA for that, so that and our drainage issues, so that's going to help. And we're just looking for, you know, how do we continue to advance what is a really major project with a lot of environmental risk um, that we think needs to be, um, ha have that kind of redundant feature to it. Questions, Commissioner? I might add something, Madam Chair. Yeah, just to put the, the financing in a little perspective, our um, operating general fund budget for a year is about $18 million. So, um, and we haven't, um, you know, we don't have a plan for the $21 million or so it'll, that will be needed to to fix the subaqueous line. Uh, and the analysis is still going on as to what the correct fix is. But at some point, not in the not too distant future, we're going to have to put a plan together and, and start work and, and start putting contracts out. So. It's a big nut for us to handle. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, Mr. Harmer, I'm in sales, so when the rubber hits the road, did I hear a hard ask there or not? I would say a hard ask without the number. Uh. So, no. You're asking for a, a, a match. Yeah. Well, I, what are, what so, are you asking us to match? That's so, very open-ended. So, uh, and the, the mayor and the commissioners can um, obviously um, throw things at me or add or, or take away from what I was going to say. The, the most, so we're taking this incrementally, kind of like trying to eat the elephant one, one bite at a time. And so our most current request is this uh, $800,000 appropriation request that um, that we have to match with $800,000. And so um, if there's an quick opportunity for the county to partner, it would be in helping us meet that match requirement. I think there's longer term discussions of how do we, you know, how does Longbook come up with the total $20 million over time? We haven't figured all that out and we'd love to be able to talk to the county, but the more immediate issue is we're trying to, you know, match this appropriation request. Okay, thank you. Since it's the only time we can all talk, and it's nice to have you guys here when we're talking about this, we more or less depleted our stabilization re reserves. So we just have our reserves. So, but there's a reserves in utility. Um, so this is definitely a utility project. But what I would recommend, if we do figure out some long, long um, term funding, like not all at once, maybe payments. But I would want to deal in place that says, if you ever secede, you have to pay us back, whatever we give you. I would want a long-term agreement that if we make that capital investment, that if something ever happened, that you reimburse Manatee County back. Because if, you know, you probably wouldn't be using our water and utility season if you do. So I don't know, um, that Jan's probably having a heart attack back there. Slightly, yeah, I figured that because I don't believe in um, I can't I don't believe in going into our twenty percent reserves. But this again is utilities, and maybe there's a way that we can work something where we so much per year to go into that fund, but with an instrument that we would get reimbursed back if this doesn't go through, or you do something else, or whatever. I mean, you know, we've all got to talk about this, but that would be my first blush thought that I want something to protect us if we do anything. 
Yes, Madam Chair, to address a couple of the points. Uh, first of all, right off the bat with Commissioner Whitmore, we, we really don't have available reserves and utilities. We just You just authorized a, a, a note, a line of credit, in order to accelerate the projects in anticipation of significant bonding for the utilities department. Um, I'd like to go back to one point that I, I think I heard correctly, that the the motivation for getting matching funds from the legislature and using ARP funds and looking to us for funds is to reduce the impact on rates for utilities for the residents of Longboat Key. Is, did I hear that correctly? I would say ultimately whatever the capital cost is of this project will relate to rates. So yes, there is a rate impact by adding a $20 million capital project to the plan. Because as the mayor said, from a scaling standpoint, $20 million to our utility fund is pretty significant, just like our, our general fund. We're a much smaller operation. So ultimately, our capital plan is funded through rates. Right. So but what I heard was is you, it, by getting this outside funding, it would lessen the impact on rates because all those capital, all the capitalization of the twenty-one million dollar project would not hit the rate calculation. Yeah, I would say it would it would lessen future increases in rates. Right, and and I guess the because our utilities are a one hundred percent enterprise fund, and we have numerous like I don't touch utilities without getting with the general counsel because of all of the bond covenants and and things like that. So I think. There would be a fact. There would be a consider a significant consideration there with regards to our part operation. Yeah, as is ours. I think our only point would be we're, we're kind of we're connected together. I, you know, I think the pipe is clearly the towns, um, but we work together on managing that. You know, when we had the. Issues with the leak, the Manatee County staff were obviously were the, worked together with the town staff and identified the leak, and we've both made some improvements. But there's a risk, I think, to Manatee County overall as part of this utility infrastructure. And and I think my comment would be, you know, if there's a way to partner, you know, now's the time for us to be talking about it. And you know, one other way to look at it too, it shouldn't lose sight of the fact, you know, we've dedicated our ARPA funds, some of ours, to this. There there is. There is a lot of funding at the state and federal and local level that is designated for infrastructure. A lot of the specific infrastructure that it is dedicated to involves sewer and other things that are rate payer structure, utility, enterprise fund. So uh, there has to be a way to, to make that connection unless all that money goes back to Washington. So we're just looking to be creative while the funding is available. I'm going to ask a quick question here. Who is your lobbyist for Tallahassee? Dave Framba. Oh, Dave Ram Jeez, you got the best, the best of the best. 800,000, you need to triple that, I'm just saying. He's the one that got the study done. Yeah, he's the one that proved it. I know. Interesting conversation. Um, anyone else have anything to add or? Mayor? Anything, sir? Okay. All right, moving on. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to uh, bring up Mr. Jonathan You're Roberson. You're ah. I'd like to bring up Mr. Jonathan Roberson, who is our transit planning section manager, to address item number three, Manatee County Area Transit Longboat Key Shuttle Service. Jonathan. Thank you, Dr. Ropes, and uh, thank you, commissioners, for, for coming out today. Um, I'm sure your schedules could barely fit it, but uh, here we go. I'm uh, Jonathan Roberson, planning manager with Manatee County Area Transit. Uh, Transit division is in the Public Works Department in Manatee County. And uh, just wanted to give you a brief update on the existing Longboat Key shuttle service we offer. Uh, next slide. Uh, just a little bit of a background. The, uh, the service launched in April of 2017. It's operated by Manatee County Area Transit. And uh, it was part of a route optimization stuff. Oh, there we go. Uh, it's a service that operates from Coquina Beach uh, connecting to our AMI trolley and our Route 6, our mainland route, to Bay Isles Shopping Center and a little below that. Um, it, 
it came out of a 2016 route optimization study we did for the system uh, and replaced a trolley uh, that was not very efficient and didn't have a lot of ridership. Um, it's a, uh, it also at the time connected to a Sarasota County area uh, transit route at Bay Isle Shopping Center. Um, so that's how the route started in 2017. Um, next slide. Um, so our shuttle is characterized by being kind of a curb-to-curb -curb service uh, that, again, operates out on the island uh, from about 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. It's about $1.50 a trip. Uh, a trip reservation is required uh, by 5 p.m. a day before. Um, subscription trips and prepaid fare trips are allowed, and um, customers have access to all of our technologies like phone uh, ticketing and instant messaging and warnings and so much about their trip. So it's very much part of the overall MCAT system that operates in the rest of the county, which is shown here. Um, LBK is a little bit of a unique geography. It's out there for our service area, and, um, and it's a dispersed population, as I think folks talked about earlier in, ter in terms of school age population. But we found this type of service actually found some, some niche markets, and uh, I'll, I'll get to that here shortly. Uh, next slide. Um, like most transit systems in the country, ridership, um, you know, ridership peaked uh, into early 2020. We had record numbers <coughs> of riders. Um, and we're finally seeing ridership start to return. We're starting to see people come back to the service sector jobs. And I have a feeling we're going to see the tourists, um, <laughs> if you haven't already, uh, coming this year. So uh, we typically do about 20 trips a day on this, on this shuttle. And we find that a majority of the people are coming from the mainland. They're coming from uh, Cortez Road, Route 6, to work out on the island. Uh, next slide. So I thought I'd just share, again, some of you are, are new on the commission, and um, there, there's definitely some success stories. We found right away that um, this service, compared to a fixed route service, it was a, a success with service workers, tourism-related workers, service sector workers at Bay Isles Park uh, Shopping Center or at Zoda Resort, for example. I've seen videos where we have 10 people get on and off at, at Zoda Resort, housekeeping crews, you name it. So they get it, they get on, and, and they use it. And again, it's the, the destinations in Longbow Key that really attract ridership. They're a bit dispersed, but Zoda and Bay Isles uh, are, are two clear examples of where we're seeing ridership. I think people are finding that it's, um, again, it's people are coming from mainland uh, uh, Manatee County, and this is kind of the, a last connection they can get out here. And so we, we found that to be a success. The, we found the fare is affordable for people um, compared to a, maybe a taxi cab ride or an Uber ride. It's, it's affordable and it meets up with the other fare systems in, in Sarasota County and Manatee County. Uh, also, our operators follow all the latest um, health, safety, and, and uh, maintenance uh, codes. So you have safe vehicles out there. I'm sure you've, you've seen them out there. Um, and it's an efficient service. We, when the, the driver doesn't have an LBK trip for a work-based trip, they may do a medical trip, get somebody over to the mainland or, or uh, over to uh, just off Cortez for, for some kind of medical trip. So our vehicles are always moving, always providing different types of trips, never idling. Um, so it's a bit of a, um, it, it, it's a unique service. We're, we're pretty proud of it. Uh, next slide. Um, kind of, kind of wrapping it up, we, what we learned, we started this four years ago, and I, I, I keep saying this, but we, we found right away that essential workers, especially through the pandemic, depended on this service. And uh, there was two months last year when the pandemic started where we started this service, and we cut the service. And let me tell you, there were a couple of people who called me and hung up on me sometimes <laughs> because that was the one service we didn't have out. Um, so they were glad to see that back in uh, June of last year. And um, we were happy to get it back. But that really showed us at the beginning how critical things were for some people for job connections. People kept working through, in, in many of these places out here, through the pandemic and do now. As I mentioned before, it's an efficient service. Uh, our vehicles are always offering a trip of some kind to people. 
And uh, it takes uh, we take walk-ons as well, so we get folks that that jump on board and figure out that they can get all over the island and up to Coquina Beach. So we're flexible in that way and able to do that. And um, our drivers get to know people, and they you know they they kind of figure this out uh, who's a walk-on and who's not. As I said before, customers seem to like our technology. Um, you can plan everything on your phone. You can find out where your bus is. You can get an instant message saying the driver's late because of traffic. It'll all come to, to their phone. That's something you can't always get with other providers. So um, we're, we're pretty proud of that. Uh, what, one more thing is we found this service is portable. Um, not sure if you saw this this year, but we kicked off a similar service uh, in North Manatee County uh, to serve Port Manatee from our northern routes. Um, so um, uh, that, that's, that was a, actually an additional regional connection for really both counties. You can now get some transit service up to Port Manatee uh, from the MCAT fixed route system. Uh, finally, we've appreciated the feedback we've received from your staff. Tom and Isaac have, are always keeping us abreast on some things they'd like to see or some things they've heard. And so we're, we feel like we've had good contact with your staff. And um, so really this was uh, maybe an easy one today, <laughs> but uh, um, just wanted to give you an update on what's operating out there right now. And um, again, thanks for coming. Chad, did you have something to add, sir? If, if I may, Madam Chair, Chad Budso, Public Works Director. Uh, it was on the slides, just the other thing, just to put it out there verbally. Our service is focused on the extension of the existing fixed route service. So back in the in the day when we did pull back from fixed route service on Longboat Key, uh, we were still crawling ourselves out of the uh, recessions and efficiency was always the key. So when you compared the uh, riders per hour on that route, it was uh, one of our very low performers and uh, compared on that. So that was always the intention. We were looking for other ways to deal with things more efficiently at the time. And now we also see that where, where Jonathan ended as we have lots of areas in Manatee County that are asking for transit service, but they're not the best uh, the best market for your standard fix route. We're, we're very inclined to see that these are uh, nice extensions. I mean, whether it's a parish or a Mayaka or something, this, is, this, this makes things a little more... Uh, easier and more palatable on the cost thing. But I, when I say that extension of the fixed route, if you had a monthly pass, if you had a daily pass, we honor that on these extension routes. If you, uh, if you had your, uh, there's no need to pay extra if you were already taking the bus. Like we, we say the service workers that might come down route three or route six out to the island, they already had their pass or they've paid their fare. They don't need to pay again on that transfer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chad, thank you. You answered one of my questions, which was, would they have to pay twice? Would they have to pay again on the connection? Uh, the answer is no. So this route in particular, it, it might be difficult for you to come up with this number for me, because. but my question would be, uh, what is ultimately, what is, this, what is this costing the county per ride, right? But it's, the problem is that you're sort of dispatching the rig to go do medical runs and other things you know, if there's low, if there's no calls, right? Yeah. Which is yeah. probably midday because this really, for the most part, let's be honest, there's low ridership on the trolley. This is not serving the residents of Longboat Key. This is helping, you know, uh, tourist-based service workers reach their, you know, base of employment. Um, so what I'm getting at is would this, and I've broached this subject with transit before, would this be our um, pilot project for a Lyft slash Uber system in the county? Um, you know, what is this costing us per ride and what would Uber or Lyft cost us per ride? And, and probably right out of the gate, if you went out there and ran the numbers and stood out there and asked for an Uber or Lyft, there's probably not going to be anyone in the general area, so it's going to be high. But once we start this system, Uber and Lyft is going to know, and there's, you know, at that point, your availability will improve uh, on the app and your price will go down, of course. But, you know, what, what, are, we, what, are, we, what are we paying for each, each run? I'd, I'd have to get back to you on on that kind of parsing that out from from the medical trips. I, I'm not quite sure what the Uber and Lyft per trip would actually cost the government. Right. Uh, I know it's more for the passenger, and then also 
uh, when transit agencies partner like this, there's extra costs from Uber or Lyft sure. for the overall trip. So, but I mean, it's not costing us a dollar fifty, which is what no, they're no. paying us. So, no. I mean, we, I would, I would not be in favor of charging the passenger the Uber or Lyft fare. But if it's costing us fifteen dollars per run, and Uber is going to cost us nine, I think we should can because there's also the the liability factor that right that doesn't doesn't play into that cost, but it's certainly there. What one of the tricks with uh, with Uber and Lyft service is can they offer um, wheelchair accessible vehicles? Uh, do they offer this? Can they offer the same technologies? We're not sure they can offer the same technologies that we've we've already uh, invested. In the rest of the system, those are sure. So there's the, other there's the other you just, the vehicle you just showed us didn't have wheelchair accessibility, um, but I'm sure you call one special if it's needed, correct? And dispatch one out there. Uh, I can't speak for them, but it they're they're supposed to. <laughs> in fact, I, I think there was some lawsuits recently nationally where they were charging extra for the delays. No, no. My my question is, do every one of our vehicles are every single one of our vehicles wheelchair accessible? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then could we then be, have an on-call service where we dispatch one of our vehicles in the event that there was a wheelchair, you know, passenger, oh, wheelchair-bound yes. passenger? Yes. Or you could, in theory, write the, a contract to where the the vendor had to will it. have to provide that. Uh, so that's that's something I've seen. As but well. now we're the first municipality interested in a, working out a, a partnership with, you know, a rideshare company. No, but we can look at that definitely. And I don't know if. If Longboat Key, I'd like to hear feedback from, you know, the town commission if it's something they would be interested in. All right. Well, on the board next is Commissioner Gold, and then Whitmore, Tom Harmon, and Commissioner Williams. Yes. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, to to mention the frustration for riders um, only being able to come up to uh, Bay Isles and. Uh, the supermarket area and not be able to really uh, run the, the extra five miles, let's say, to St. Armand Circle. Uh, if there's the Longboat Key Club, there's a lot of other condos there that that have workers daily. There's golf course there. And um, uh, it would be very helpful to have a one-county fix for the transit. And uh, right now, uh, Sarasota is providing an Uber-type service called On Demand. And so you can call, and like within 15 minutes, uh, they'll, have, they'll have a car there for you for $1.50. So it's probably, to give you an idea about what it, what it they're subsidizing it, of co course, but it was cheaper than the bus they canceled. That said, right now there's no, there's really, if anybody's coming from um, Bradenton or, or toward Anna Maria uh, to work on the, the south part of the island, they have to stop, get off, and call another, another on-demand ride because there's no bus service even to transfer to. And so it just seems like there should be some way that Sarasota and Manatee could work together to, to get this solved. It's just, um, it's uh, neither, both systems are good, but, but they're different. And because they're disjointed there, it really isn't a, a very smooth service for Longboat Key. Understood. We, the, I, the, the, the dilemma was we, we kind of discovered this, this partial market at least with the, the service workers and walk-ons we see now. We, we did meet a few times with um, town staff, uh, Sarasota County Transit staff, and their vendor for that MOD service. And one of the questions that came up was, could, could their vendor serve our, the current geography we do on this shuttle? And um, But basically, in, in early conversations, the vendor uh, and Sarasota County was telling us, they, you know, could we, it, in theory, ask our commission to pay for the trips from their vendor in this geography? And uh, Sarasota County and the vendor staff indicated to us that they couldn't, we'd have to pay for trips, we'd have to pay for the whole zone, which goes to downtown, which goes through St. Armand's and all the way to downtown, that they couldn't parse out the trips. Um, they also weren't clear on wheelchair vehicles and so on at the time, and they wouldn't honor our fares. Uh, those are some of the kind of tricky roadblocks that they mentioned early. So um, we, Tom and um, you know Isaac brought this to our attention, and, and we, we did meet a few times, but it's a, it's a little bit of a, a little tricky uh, um, with the, the, 
what looked like the vendor's constraints at, at this moment to, to serve this area. So it did kind of be, it was kind of left there. Remember when we started this service, there was a scat route that went to Bay Isles and we had an interlocal agreement with them to kind of, you know, to operate, they'd operate that and we would do this and um, they canceled that route. So yes. <laughs> it, yeah. So it, it's our dilemma is we've, we've got these folks that use this now and they like, really a number of elements from the MCAT system. So I, I hear you. It's just, it's kind of a dilemma for, for us. What It's just a short trip. It's just a short trip. So, you know, I, I, it seems like, it seems like long-term we should be able to find some sort of a solution to this. Right. Um, Commissioner Gold, I'm going to butt in at this point. I will tell you that the MPO, uh, I've asked that they bring that uh, before our board because uh, Sarasota has come, they've really come up with a different plan on, on a lot with their transit. So um, I have asked that Sarasota do a presentation to us at the MPO on their changes there. So Thank maybe you. that will come up and it could be good. I don't know. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore and then uh, Mr. Harmer. The whole purpose of this island wide trolley into Lombok Key was mm. to close that gap so that we would have continuous transit service through Sarasota and Manatee County. What I didn't realize is I had ju you just brought it to my memory really was that SRQ had stopped and that and then we kept going to try to get to the shopping center to try to help the workers. You know, um, I know I called an Uber the other day and um, for someone to go to Ellington that was at my house and they came within six minutes and it was $33. So I'm thinking, oh, that's a lot of money. But I, I mean, I know we would work something out on demand. I would like to see what Sarasota is doing. I know our ridership is very low, and that's why we actually did what, what why Sarasota County stopped and why we stopped and went to the on demand, because it didn't justify the expense, expense when we were doing half hour service. I, I think you were here that, uh, I don't know if you were here, but we were doing a half hour service at one time, have three trolleys going back and forth. We had better service, but now we don't. So I would like to see what Sarasota is doing, but I think Sarasota you know, needs to step up too and maybe come a little bit more to the shopping center to help us out. So when you have your meeting with them, I would ask them that because they're the, that, the reason why all this has happened is because uh, Sarasota stopped. And well, we they had will, to they out will to go do. to Bay Isles. I mean, the, the on-demand goes down. Is that the shopping center you're talking about? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the reason why we're here today is because they stopped. So, and cost effective, I can understand. Mr. Harmer. Thank you. I, I, Commissioner Gold said some of what I was going to say, but I just wanted to thank Man, you know, Manatee County and MCAP because Jonathan and his team have been very responsive. You know, there's no question there's a good service in the Manatee County side. Uh, Sarasota County eliminated their fixed route when COVID happened, and then they reinstituted this new mobility on demand, which is more Uber like, where you have an app and it's a 30 minute or less arrival time curb to curb. They serve to the county line on Longbow Key, so down by our Bayfront Park, all the way to downtown Sarasota. So you can go to downtown Sarasota from Sarasota County side of Longbow Key for, I think it's a dollar, is it a dollar fifty? Um, but they don't go any farther than the county line. And Manatee County goes up to Bay Isles, which is into Sarasota County. Um, but I think the, where our commission has been at for the last year or two is it's outside of our control, but can't the two counties figure out a way? And, and we've, we understand the challenges. We're just trying to end up with we're one town, one island, and can you go on a bus or a van or something from one end of the island to another on public transit, whether it's for employees or for visitors, et cetera, and how does that connection work? So it's a little bit challenging for us to have the two completely different systems, and not that one's better than another, they're just different, and they don't intersect that cleanly on the island, which kind of creates challenges for us. Uh, you know, it sounds like to me that, Dr. Hopes, perhaps you could contact uh, the administrator for Sarasota County and see if something can't be worked out between the two counties. Mayor? Yeah, just to, I don't know if anyone else wants to talk, but just I've to wrap more, it up. Yes. Enjoyed what, um, you know, what, what Penny said is true, what Thomas said is true. I don't want to repeat things. Uh, but, um, you know, we talked earlier about 
issues of being in two counties that are probably not uh, fixable, like appraisers and like and like elections, uh, others that are fixable, uh, like the emergency service. This is one that should be fixable, and it's an important service that the county needs. And I would only I would also add that I think when SRQ was dropped and when uh, the, the you know the the buses were dropped uh, or changed from Manatee County, there was a latent period where things were slower. Uh, things are growing pretty quickly. We have a project that's about to start at the St. Regis where they're going to have 800 uh, construction workers, and they're going to have a large number of employees once that's done. Uh, every spot of land that isn't developed either residentially or commercially on Lombo Key is either under development or about to be developed. Uh, we had two openings, you know, ribbon cutting ceremonies for new businesses in the last couple of weeks. One was at Whitney Plaza. You know, at Whitney Plaza is not dead. There's a new owner there. Uh, they're they're fixing it up, and I think that that may thrive again. So, uh, you know, I don't want to be behind the the eight ball on this. Uh, we, if we can get a little bit in front, and you know, this is not on you. This is on this is on us, and it's on both counties to try to come up with a solution. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Commissioner uh, Williams. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that primarily uh, Lombo Key services to uh, Zoda and Bay Isles. Is that correct? Correct. Um, percentages, hard numbers. I mean, are, are we basically creating the service just so people can get to those two areas? Are there any, anybody else using this? Uh, yeah. In fact, I, I had a call uh, from somebody, uh, uh, the, a guy who owns an environmental services company, and he's just south the Bay Isles, like a quarter mile. I, I forget the building, but it's it's a condo building. And... Um, our schedulers thought that was out of the area. He scheduled trips for like six to eight of his crew um, for that, and our schedulers thought, no, that's out of our area. We can't help you, and and we we clean that up and are, are helping these folks with their trips. But that's kind of off, you know, that's kind of out, off Bay Isles. But to us, that that was the same concept, especially you know a, a kind of a crew leader directing his his crew. And he was doing actually doing managing the trips for his. So yes, there are trips that happen off the, off those two areas. Um, it gets a little tricky when the communities are super gated, or you know, it depends. Sometimes somebody will meet us outside of a, a building or something. You, we we can't always manage those gated communities. Um, but yeah, there has been these other buildings and things you wouldn't think offhand would have jobs. And um, sometimes we have to be sharp to make sure those trips happen. All right, thank um, you. And I have another question. Uh, between Manatee and Sarasota, has anybody considered airport service, any public transit that goes to the airport? Well, we, right now we, uh, we, we ha our Route 99 goes to the airport. That goes from Bradenton to down, uh, downtown Bradenton to downtown Sarasota. We share that route with Sarasota. But how, how would we on Longbow Key if we wanted to take public transit to get to the airport or have somebody coming in? Any any reasonable way to do that? Not a direct route from Longbow Key to, they would have to transfer to the court, Route 6 and then take this Route 99 to the airport. So at this time, no, no direct air, uh, airport shuttle. Thank you. Commissioner Bishop and then Commissioner Serbia. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, one of the things as we've listened to the conversation on all sides is the long-term big picture. And Mayor Schneier um, talked about the 800 people that it's going to take to build the St. Regis. Um, quite honestly, if they don't take public transportation, we don't know where the hell they're parking because there's no land out there for them to park on. But the other big issue, and I'm sure you all are seeing this in other parts of Banatee County, is service employees can't afford to drive to and from Longboat Key and sit in traffic for two hours when rents have gone up 50% in both counties. And you're looking at people who are not making that much money. Um, so if we don't have viable public transportation, we are going to have really good businesses and some of those great restaurants that Kevin is always telling people to come visit out on Longboat Key aren't going to have enough staff for you all to come see us. So we have got to have viable public transportation and we've got to make it easy in such a way that we have a dependable workforce. And right now, that's not working. 
Commissioner Servi and then Commissioner Cruz. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you again, Commissioner Bishop. Those are very good comments. Um, and I appreciate the mayor's comments too, because this is a problem that we can solve. Mm -hmm. uh, there, this is an easy one, you guys. All we have to do is get together with a little time and a little communication. We can figure this out. Um, we have had transit routes that overlap Sarasota County and Manatee County for economic development, for workforce reasons. We've done it on Tamiami Trail. Um, we can do that. And I also appreciate Commissioner Williams' comment about asking about the airport. Because, I mean, to me, I think if we haven't studied that, we need to study that because... I would imagine that that is, would be used <laughs> if we had that service. Um, we did hear about what Sarasota County is doing from Nancy Dieter to, at the um, MPO meeting. So we heard a little bit more about that. But hopefully the MPO representatives that we have at Manatee County will bring that up at the next MPO and get a better understanding of it. But yeah, if we could just get together and schedule some time together, we can work this one out. Thank you. Yeah, Dave is already <clears throat> putting that together. Commissioner, Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, just uh, it's someone just brought it up about the airport actually, and it was what I was going to ask. We, we managed to go across county with with Route 99, so I don't see how this is so difficult. And and honestly, what I found ironic was you basically said everyone who uses this service are people from Cortez Village, but going to work. So there, this is a predominantly Manatee County citizen service to help them work. Yes, is it? Have we looked into exactly what the net impact is of just driving a couple more miles, our own citizens, getting them to employment and back? It seems like we're, we're trying to make a lot out of what seemingly is a little, that we, we have to work out interlocals with Sarasota and so on, just to go a couple of extra miles, not to mention saying, okay, get from Cortez out to the island, then take a shuttle from the island to the bottom of the island, and then hop a different thing after you've called ahead 24 hours to take it halfway down another island and then when you get there wait for sarasota to come pick you up just so you can go work for 10 bucks an hour i mean as opposed to just taking them there it, it seems like a, a simpler solution it seems like at least in the short term even if we say let's in good faith work with sarasota but in the short term we've we've got the system and it's a matter of a few extra miles down the road to get people down and to your point when when st regis comes up what's let's, let's hope a lot of manatee county residents get jobs there and, and opportunities because right now those are very high paying jobs because they're in demand if i can help get them down there then i'll i'll do it because it's a net positive for manatee county because they're going to come back and rent here and they're going to buy their food here and so on and so forth and in all honesty if we're going down to st armand's anyway and i can grab some people from st armand's and just by chance drop them back off on anna maria so they can go out to eat and have some drinks up in manatee county <laughs> i'd like that too like you know we, we could say look <laughs> Southbound from Manatee, we'll drop you off wherever you want all the way down to St. Armand's. But if you're getting picked up down in St. Armand's, our first stop's on the Manatee County side. We, we're, we're not making up stops because that's, that's Sarasota's responsibility. But we'll drop you all the way down to St. Armand's. But on the way back, we start at the Manatee County border and we'll drop you all the way back up to, to our trolley. I mean, it, it seems like a, a minor additional cost for a potential major community benefit. Yeah, that that's something that's... Pretty easily done. I think um, talking to Sarasota County about service and to their service area, that's a, a, a courtesy <laughs> at least. But yeah, that's something we can do flexibly. I think the um, the MOD zone that they have now, you know, they were kind of saying you, you got to pay for any trip coming from downtown Sarasota all the way up. But um, yeah, uh, there's also a new shuttle service from downtown Sarasota to St. Armand's starting soon as well. So St. Armand's kind of becomes a bit of a... Um, a, a key point, perhaps. Yeah. And we can also maybe convince Longbow Key to, to hop in on our, our fancy new water taxi coming along the way. And, <laughs> and that'll actually solve a lot of problems. I mean, seriously, if we're, if, if, uh, what's that? Airport. airport to, you're going to take a water taxi that's to the airport the now? Airport. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, that's we back, that's back and forth that direction. But I'm saying, if we're talking about yep. Palmetto to, to Bradenton to the Bean Point down, down, all the way down, our, they, I mean, it, what, what is, you know, is it maybe it's feasible to have another stop down in Lombo Key? And that, that helps some of this too, because people can hop that water taxi from anywhere and get on to Lombo Key at that point. Yeah, agreed. This, uh, good points. Um, and Elliot, yeah. Said. All right, well, I don't have any other commissioners on the board. Is there any other comments before we take a 10-minute recess? 
No, not public comment. We're not done. All right, we're going to go ahead. We'll have a 10-minute recess.
Good afternoon. Let's get this meeting back in session. We'll go ahead. Uh, who's going to introduce item number three? Four. Sorry. What? Yep, four. Charlie. Director, Charlie Hunziker. All right. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, members of Longbow Key Commission. Thank you, members of our board, Dr. Hopes. Mr. Clay, for allowing us to present uh, what is one of those good news items, I believe, uh, because we all share a sense of place. You know, we, we share a location along Southwest Florida that I think tourists find seamless. Uh, they come here and enjoy the robust economy that we have. They're really supported by our beaches, but our beaches are constantly challenged by the, you know, the erosional forces of the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, so in in enjoying these beaches, it's our role to make sure they're maintained like we would maintain any asset in our inventory. And certainly one of those beaches that we recognize are our shared beaches of the south end of Kakina Beach and the north end of Longboat Key that are influenced by Longboat Pass. Uh, not, Longboat Pass has the effect of uh, controlling both beach accretion and erosion on our shared shores. And while most of the uh, sand, that beach quality sand that we utilize to re-nurse the great lengths of Anna Maria Island and Longboat Key come from the Passage Key Shoal uh, at the north end of Anna Maria Island, certainly a lesser but equally significant source of sand comes from the navigational improvements and requirements we maintain on Longboat Pass. I was uh, privileged to be part of the sand sharing agreement uh, that we reached with uh, first uh, town manager Griff Roberts in the late 90s, the town of Longbow Key, that was recently codified with our FDEP permits jointly issued to the town and the county for the and the West Coast Inland Navigation District, to which we both belong, for the maintenance for navigation of the pass. Uh, simply by proximity, uh, this sand source is the most cost efficient, the most cost effective, and of the highest quality because it's constantly washed by the forces of tides in and out of the pass. So it only makes sense that we share this asset and that we also share the works on the north end of Longboat and the south end of Anna Maria to control those very aggressive erosional forces. Our most erosional beaches are on the south end of Anna Maria at the place we, we look, know and love as Kakina Beach. And I should call it the Kakina Causeway uh, because it was constructed as a causeway by the state of Florida in the late 50s. And for that reason, Mother Nature has never wanted it to remain. And the state highway system then uh, had to re respond by building a series of short perpendicular groins up and down the beach to hold it together and not let it wash into the pass. They had to construct the uh, jetty at the north end of Longboat Pass to keep it from washing into the pass. So these are structures, along with a healthy sand source, that keep our beaches beautiful. But it's time now to reevaluate those structures from our position. They're over 60 years old. Um, I'm older than them, unfortunately. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel a lot younger than them. Uh, so our presentation today touches on the history of the beaches that we we both enjoy, a little bit of our renourishment program, you know, for the benefit of those who aren't familiar with it. We're going to talk about also the engineering solutions that we're contemplating to deal with those highly erosional forces on Longboat Key, and also uh, close out by uh, talking a little bit more about the artificial reefs that we are placing uh, for permit mitigation purposes, not necessarily for fishing, but for permit mitigation purposes along the near shore of Kikina Beach as part of the ongoing renourishment programs that we have. And artificial reef replacements are part of that permitting responsibility. So I'd like to turn the presentation over to a highly competent and good friend of mine, uh, Tom Pirro who's a professional engineer and one of the partners of the Coastal Protection Engineering Firm, um, right there in the logo. Uh, Tom and I have worked together since uh, 2002 
uh, perfecting and addressing the beautiful beaches of Anna Maria Island and uh, Longbow Key. Tom. Thank you very much, Charlie, and good afternoon, commissioners and staff. I should also mention, too, that I have also had the opportunity and great fortune to work with the town of Longbow Key over many years as well, and I think some of that will show in our presentation today. Um, Charlie actually gave my entire presentation <laughs> just now. <laughs> So he always does. We'll be so able to go. We'll, <laughs> we'll be able to go quickly through it. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, I know this this presentation is primarily about Coquina Beach, but as you see, the program is very intermingled. There's a lot going on. So if you can afford me just a couple of slides to for the background to bring us uh, up to speed on where we're at. Um, the overall Anna Maria Island Beach Nourishment Program is really a sand-based program. There are some coastal structures that help stabilize the beach, but it's predominantly a sand-based program. And including the most recent projects done in 20, 2020 and 2021, you've placed approximately 6.8 million cubic yards of sand on your beach. That's an enormous accomplishment, and uh, congratulations is due for that. Um, important distinction is that there are really two different types of programs on, on Anna Maria Island. The first is the Central Anna Maria Island Project, which is the federally authorized program that's run primarily by the Army Corps of Engineers and sponsored by the county. We work with them closely on it, but it's really an Army Corps federally authorized project. The other county-managed projects are the city of Anna Maria, which in recent years has been stable and has not required any nourishment, and Coquina Beach, which is going to be the subject of this presentation. Next slide, please. Um, the Central Beach project, just for a bearing of where it's all at, um, is basically a, a little bit more than four miles of kind of the central part of the island, running from 77th Street uh, down to 4th Street South in, in Bradenton Beach. And it was initially restored in the early 90s and been, has been renourished five times, including the most recent uh, 2020 project done by the Corps of Engineers. Next slide, please. Um, so that project was, as I mentioned, completed by the Corps of Engineers, placed uh, around 760,000 cubic yards of sand uh, within that area. As Charlie mentioned, that sand came from the Passage Key uh, sand source at the north end of the island. Um, they did actually add a dune resiliency component, which was unique to, to the project. The Army Corps had tried to do that in several other projects around the state, and the timing didn't work out. The timing did work out in, in, uh, in your project, and they were able to implement, uh, build, build some small dunes and, and bump up the protection a little bit, primarily in the southern half of the island. Um, and also, uh, the Army Corps included Coquina Beach as an additive project and put 250,000 cubic yards of sand on Coquina Beach. Uh, above and beyond the FEMA project that we're going to talk about as well. So Coquina Beach is now full of sand. Could you click one more, please? And so you see here, Charlie was out on the beach, and, and he really loves this sand, and oh, yeah. <laughs> took, took, took a video of him testing the sand out on the beach there. Thank you. Next slide. <laughs> um, so the Coquina Beach project is about a mile and a half long. It, it runs from 4th Street all the way down to the pass. Um, it was initially restored in 2011. Certainly sand had been placed there prior to that, but the first engineered beach was in 2011, and it was renourished twice, uh, once in 2013-14, in and then a 2020 project that the Corps did, and then the county came back in uh, at the beginning of this year and did the FEMA project, which capped it all off uh, in, in early 2021. Next slide, please. Um, these are just some of the particulars about that, about that FEMA project. It was a combined project for damages from Hurricane Hermine and Hurricane Irma. There was a lot of process that went into that. There was actually uh, an appeal we had to go through for, for um, uh, Hermine uh, with FEMA um, in order to get that approved. And combining the projects and switching the sand source to Longbow Pass is what, is what saved the day and got, got those approvals in place. Um, I don't want you to pay too much attention to the dollar amounts on there. Those are just the approved amounts from FEMA. That doesn't mean you're getting that exact amount of money. What's more important is the percentages that I have down there below. 75% for Hermine, which is the typical FEMA share, and then 90% for, for Irma because the, the, the federal government actually bumped that up from 75 to 90%. And then uh, whatever's left over from that, because of all of your public access and, and some of the trolleys and things that you were talking about here today, you actually get 50% of the remainder from the state of Florida as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, if you all, if at least the county commission, if you remember, we came to you and gave a presentation in December of 2020, I think it was December 15th, maybe your last meeting of last year, and talked about the project just as it was, it was coming up. And we had given you a cost estimate of $3 million, 2.98 more or less. Um, we actually were awarded the project shortly thereafter in January of 2021 for $2.8 million and completed the whole work uh, for 2.5 million. So great, great performance there on the on the project. 
Uh, next slide, please. Um, just a little bit about the timeline, just to have you understand how quickly this went. This is unusual that it went this quickly, but everything was so planned, and I have to give credit to your procurement department. I cannot believe how quickly they put this out to bid, got the bids in, and awarded a contract. I mean, we advertised in December, and they awarded in February, and then the contractor went to work immediately after that, built the whole project in 20 days, and completed everything by the middle of March. I mean, just, just a fantastic performance. And, and that dredge was, was in the pass at the time, and Longbow Key then took advantage of that and direct negotiated with that contractor, which was just a substantial savings, I assume, you, you, you afforded from that, and um, uh, remain, cleared out the remainder of the pass and put the sand on the north end of Longbow Key. So we're here talking about collaboration today. That was, that was just an absolutely fantastic collaboration. Um, the FEMA reimbursement process is still underway. In fact, I'm working with Charlie's staff uh, presently, really today in this room, uh, getting, getting that uh, documentation squared away. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, so talking about all the coordination and projects that are going on that the county has coming up that may interact with some of the things the town of Longbow Key is doing, certainly just if not for anything else, the proximity to the pass in Longbow Key itself. As Charlie mentioned, um, there's been a sand sharing agreement with, with uh, the town dating back to the early 80s. Um, that was certainly before my time. But I got involved when we developed a joint uh, Longbow Pass Inlet Management study uh, that was a, a completed in 2011. And that was just a monumental study to look at the pass, how the pass affects the adjacent beaches and where the sand should go that gets dredged out of, out of that, that pass. You know? And I, I used to say that Longbow Pass was the pass that separated two communities, and after study, it was the pass that brought them together. And I think that that's really bode, bode true, because the next step after that study was implemented is that you all joined forces together and got a permit to dredge the pass and keep it maintained and put the sand on the two. You're actually co-permittees on that. So this, we used this permit for the Coquina project, and then the town of Longbow Key turned around, used that permit again to put sand on their side. And that was, again, just, just a great, great coordination. Um, and, and that was the 2021 uh, Longbow Pass dredging that, that the town, town completed. Um, coming forth from there, we now have several other projects. We've done all the sand projects. Anna Maria Island is full of sand right now, which is a great thing, uh, not only for Anna Maria Island, but also Longbow, Pet, Longbow Key has a lot of sand at the north end as well. Um, I should mention that the stabilization structures that Mr. Harmer showed earlier um, were also um, put, put in concept in that 2011 inlet management plan. Certainly, uh, they were refined in their design and, and permitted after that, but the concept for stabilizing that north end was actually in that original plan. So you guys are really staying true to the plan that you put, put together. Um, another part of that plan was to look at rehabilitating the jetty on the north side of the pass at the south end of of Coquina Beach, and I'll show you some pictures of that. Um, there's also the Coquina Beach stabilization structures that Charlie mentioned, the groins and changing those around, um, and some reef projects, and then I'll have one slide about the inlet management study for Passage Key at the north end as well. Next slide, please. So looking at the Longboat Pass jetty rehabilitation, why is it needed? Well, this, this jetty was installed in the late 1950s. Um, it's made of a wooden crib with concrete pilings with a bunch of rocks inside of it. And for the most part, it's in pretty good shape, uh, surprisingly, that it's been there for that long. It's kind of antique looking and, and very nautical, but it, it's, doing, it's doing a fairly good job. There's two issues with it. The first is that because it's porous, sand flows through the jetty and goes into the pass, fills up the pass, strolls in different areas, and it steals sand from Coquina Beach. So back in 2012, we tested what, what it would what would happen if we made that, that jetty impermeable. And we put in these geotextile tubes. You can see a small picture in the upper right corner here. Um, and they were only meant to be temporary. They were supposed to be in place for three years. Well, it's been almost 10 years, and they're still there, still doing their job. Now, the seaward end of them are failing, and you can see the coating is starting to wear off. So we really do need to get those out and sand tighten this structure uh, in, a, in a different way. So that, that's issue number one. The second issue is the seaward end of the structure that you could see here has really taken a beating over the years. There's, there's not really much left to it, and sand is going to go around the front of that, so we want to rebuild the head of that structure. So that's the two things we're looking at uh, for the Longboat Pass journey. Next, next slide, please. Um, now, shifting our attention further north in Coquina Beach uh, to the uh, existing concrete groins that are there, um, in the upper photo, you can see a series of them. There's actually about 20 of them that go the whole length all the way down to, to the pass. The ones at the southern end of the island are basically buried all the time, but at the northern end of, of uh, Coquina Beach, they come exposed frequently, 
And um, they've been damaged over the years. If you see the other picture there, that's, that's a picture from the 2011 project, I believe, where we were putting sand over, over those groins. And you can see how they're kind of a concrete cap with some rocks around the front of them. But they're in pretty bad shape. There's rebar sticking out of them. The caps are broken. And um, as I've heard from Charlie and, and uh, the, the chief lifeguard, it also creates kind of a safety hazard because if somebody falls down on the other side of the, of the groin, the lifeguards can't see them, and, and there's a concern there as well. So at least in this location, the northern half of Coquina Beach, we'd like to take those out. They've served their service life, unlike Charlie, who is still servicing the county very well. <laughs> These groins have completed their service life. They're over 60 years old. I, any coastal engineer will tell you that, that, is, that you got your good bang for the buck out of those, but they need to be either replaced or removed. And so we're looking at um, how to do that effectively, but also address the erosion uh, the erosion. Uh, discontinuity that exists in Coquina Beach. Next slide, please. So we look, we're doing a study right now that we're actually poised to complete here by the end of the year and submit in a draft form uh, to, to the county for, for comment and review and to the state of Florida as well. Um, and we looked at a lot of alternatives. The seven that are on the slide there are the ones that we actually went forward and, and ran through our numer numer numerical model, uh, which you'll, you see some graphics on the slide there. The one that popped out to us as being the uh, obvious uh, choice to move forward, at least conceptually, is this alternative seven that you see. And I'll just turn to the screen a minute and kind of show you what, what we're looking at here. This up, upper slide is a, oh, it's, it's mobile, great. <laughs> The, uh, the upper slide here is, is a bathymetry slide, which means that's the elevation of the sand underwater. And you can kind of see where those three um, breakwaters are, the black lines that are, that are next to the shoreline. You can see it pulled the shoreline out in, in the modeling. What's more interesting, if we look at this one, this is the difference between if we have the groins in, uh, have the breakwaters in or not. And the red areas are areas that would accumulate sand as a result of the structures. And the blue areas are areas that would maybe lose sand as a result of the structures. This is, in fact, exactly the signature we're trying to achieve because we need to hold more sand at the north end. We can afford to release a little in the middle part, but we've had no effect at the south end of the island and no effect beyond the south end of the island. And that was a really critical thing, and actually one of the uh, objectives of our study was to preserve the transport through the area, but redistribute the sand. And I think we've achieved it quite well here in this, and we're going to take that forward to the next uh, design step. And next slide, please. Uh, Charlie also asked that I give a, a quick briefing on the artificial reef projects that are going on as well. Artificial reefs are actually not new to Manatee County. You have uh, several already in place. Um, and they are required for mitigation to something called nearshore hard bottom. And I have a circle here, which you, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little dark spot in the aerial that you can see there. That's, that's a submerged flat rock, rock reef. And it's ephemeral, so it gets covered and uncovered. But um, when we put sand on the beach, that, that rock gets covered, and over time it erodes that a rock gets exposed again. That's considered an impact by the state and the federal government. So as a result, the county has built reefs very successfully as well. And those reefs are actually right offshore of, of, uh, of Coquina Beach as well. And you might be able to see some dark spots in that uh, other uh, bigger oval. But if you click one more time, I've actually overlaid the location of these reefs on here so you can see them a little bit clearer. And they're color-coded. So the, the yellow one there, the orange one there, is, uh, was a reef built in 2005. This blue one down here was built in 1993. And this double piece here was the most recent one built in 2011. This area offshore here is where we're currently looking for to build out the final component of the mitigation uh, that's required by your permits. And then no further mitigation will be required for any of the projects built on the island. That part will be complete, or at least that's what we've been um, told by the state at, at this time. Um, secondly, as part of this project, um, Charlie also asked us to look into um, building an artificial reef uh, for recreational purposes, something more like a snorkel trail um, that's a little bit closer to shore, a little bit more recreational based, a little bit more accessible to people. These, these artificial reefs for mitigation are very mitigation centric, so they're kind of boulders all stuck together in deeper water and not really um, you know, user friendly, so to speak. They're fish friendly, but not maybe user friendly. Uh, so we want to try to build a little bit of a recreational reef as well. And we're looking at some different areas to do that um, when we go out and do the investigations for the mitigation reef. Next slide, please. Uh, lastly, I just want to take a brief um, note on the passage key inlet management study. 
Um, as, as Charlie mentioned earlier, uh, the Passage Key Shoal at the very north end of the island, uh, you know, basically offshore of Bean Point, is the sand source for the Anna Maria Island project, aside from what we can get out of Longboat Pass sharing with Longboat Key. Um, and the picture that I have here, again, this is a bathymetry map, so all those colors um, show you kind of the topography underwater. And red colors are shallower water or thicker deposits of sand, and the blue colors are deeper water or thinner deposits of sand. And the, the lines that I have shown on the graph there are actually all permitted borrow areas that are already authorized and have either been used, such as borrow area D that was just used for your recent uh, project, borrow area C that was used for Coquina Beach, and borrow area B, which is actually a town of Lumbo Key borrow area that was used at some point in the past. And there are some other town of Lumbo Key borrow areas throughout this as well. Uh, this one way out here, H, is uh, a borrow area that was designed and permitted as part of the Port Dolphin um, settlement agreement, if you all remember that from many, many years ago. Turns out that pipeline never went in, but that borrow area is still developed and, and available for use. So, so, so that's good as well. Um, since this is the primary sand source for the future Manatee County projects, not only the federally authorized projects, but also potentially um, supplementing Coquina Beach, the state required that we do a comprehensive inlet management study, much like the one that we did for Longboat Pass in 2011. And we are in the, in the middle of starting that up. Uh, we're, we've done some early numerical modeling. We've held one meeting with the state. And we're going to start holding broader technical advisory committee meetings. And uh, the state has asked us to, that's the appropriate time to bring in additional stakeholders. And so we would actually like to reach out to the town of Lumbo Key. Uh, Mr. Harmer, maybe I can uh, talk to Charlie Mops in, in the coming days or weeks and, and, and bring him in to uh, participate in that, if that's okay with you. And um, we'll start those meetings and certainly keep you all apprised of, of, the, uh, of the progress. I believe, if you click one more slide, please. I believe that's all I have. So thank you so much for your time. And Charlie and I will be here for your discussion. Thank you. met with, uh, when I talked to Commissioner, Mer is it Merrigan? Merrigan? Merrigan, okay. She asked me about Coquina Beach and is there something we could do about the flooding? And I said, well, what, and she said, they're doing the parking lot and they're not addressing the flooding. And she wasn't aware that this is a flood, this is a flood management program to reduce the flooding. So I wanted all the town of Longboat Key commissioners to know that. Am I correct? This is the storm water where tourist tax is paying out of this and utilities, I think utilities. But did you were you aware of that? Not, not all the detail, no. I yeah, know. so uh, that's hopefully to help the flooding. And they're, they're on their second phase right now. Just that, that's one of the comments that have come up at our commission meetings where an ingress-egress issue of trying to leave the island I and mean, when you have storm or rain events and the road will flood right. in that Coquina Beach area. And so that's where the questions come from. Yeah, and that we're addressing that. Okay. I think it's, what, $6 million for both? At seven for both phases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just wanted to address the snorkel trail idea. I think that sort of came up during the... Uh, the chamber retreat, and I, I'm a big fan of the idea. Essentially, we're looking to take down the Greenbridge Fishing Pier, and ultimately the, the Cortez Bridge is going to come down, and then the Manatee Avenue Bridge is going to come down, and then the Longboat Pass Bridge is going to come down, and then the DeSoto Bridge is going to come down, and the Skyway Fishing Pier is likely to come down. <laughs> and the uh, the state, this well, the state will... Essentially, they'll move it for you within your county, but it's it's your problem, ultimately, is what I've been told. Um, and so that's, you know, in conversations with Charlie, we came up with the, the idea of, you know, do we want to put a committee together and come up with ideas with, you know, charter fishermen and local elected officials? Where do we want to build reefs? The idea of the snorkel trail came up, which I thought was pretty dang cool idea where you could, I mean, we could run a mile of that stuff you know, down a, a section of the beach, a third of a mile out, where if you had fins, you could possibly swim to it, but otherwise you anchor up out there and say no boats beyond this point. Anyway, it, it's it's a pie-in-the-sky idea, but we are going to end up with all this stuff, well, and it's going to have to go somewhere, right? Yeah. And it's it's an opportunity, right, <laughs> that I, I wouldn't want to pass up. Ma 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 and Chair, we're way I, ahead of it. So. If I could, we have <clears throat> those, those type of heavy uh, construction bridge materials are ideally suited for deep water fishing reef deployment. And we do have uh, square miles of permitted sites 
offshore Anna Maria in anticipation of the Skyway Bridge coming down and a Green Bridge can hold that and much more. Uh, so we're going to have be, much more, uh, much more. Yeah, uh, the, br- the bridges that you're talking about easily could can be contained sure. there. Well, I guess it's, and, it's a good opportunity to discuss it now because we have yeah. Longboat here, yes. and obviously a lot of that shoreline is there. So. Yeah. And the, so. the, 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 the snorkel reef uh, we, we're hoping to do it would be uh, limestone, native limestone boulders about the size of these small tables over here and placed so that you might be able to just swim from one to the next to the next to the next in, in a truly a, you know, like a soft recreational experience way. No, no chambers or caves or anything Well, like that's that. no fun, but, Charlie. Have, have but, you been to the forts but, out at, out at uh, Egmont Key? I mean, that's But fun. offshore, if you want to do black grouper, that's sure. where they go. And sure. we can build and have built uh, those reefs, and there's more to come. Sure. Yes. Uh, Mayor, did you have anything to add, sir? Yeah, I just had a question as you were talking um, I was was hearing how important Passage Key is to all these plants before you said that you're doing a study of Passage Key. But do you have an idea how long lived the, that resource is for all of us? Yeah, so, so what we've learned so far is that Passage Key is a really unique resource and has an unbelievable 20-year cycle of circulation of sand. That's up. That's been documented in, in the in the literature. We've reevaluated it. We're modeling it now. And so there is a sustainable source of sorts at, at that island. Now, there's a river of sand that moves, go up the next coast, the next coast, the next coast, the next coast. It, it comes all the way down. Um, but this area is kind of unique because it's such a large gap before the next landmass. And so as the sand is moving around offshore, it's coming in, it's refilling in some of these borrow areas that we have dredged in the past. So. Um, I, I can't give you a number on how many years' worth of sand is out there, but it is recharging. To what degree it's recharging is what we're evaluating now and going to be working through this technical advisory committee on. Great. Thank you. Dr. Hopes? I'm just going to mention um, my vision of a snorkeling trail is more like the north the part of St. John's Island and the Virgin Islands. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Not too. navigating around yeah. b- uh, destroyed bridge material, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're a hardcore snorkeler if you want that. So, Does anyone know approximately how many years we're talking about with that? 75, 80, you know. We need to make sure we write it down somewhere because none of us will be here. <laughs> Just saying. Well, it's James a good idea. Might, long, long James term, might still be here. Long-term <laughs> planning, long planning was mentioned earlier, no, so me, I thought I would us. throw some out there for you. <laughs> no. Any other comments, commissioners? All right. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you so um, much. Have a great day. I'll go ahead and yes, and sir. I might I might add, uh, Tom Manager Harmon, your your staff is excellent to work with. They're professional. Uh, they're timely. Get back with us all the time. I'm probably the late the last person to call back uh, with my, my my schedule, but I do appreciate your help and of course your your partnership with Dr. Hopes uh, to make our professional jobs effective and easy. Easy. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and open to public comment, but I I just want to say that I think it's obvious um, that this board, um, and it probably started really a couple of years ago, um, where this board really wanted to try and have a better working relationship with Longboat Key. And um, I think that we're seeing that. We can't solve all of the problems of Longboat Key, but we can certainly be partners in doing more than what we've done in the past. Um, and that goes both ways. You know, we're going to be looking at you guys to be good partners to us, too, because we're all in the same family, well, at least half of us. You know, but, but anyway, I, I think, uh, you know, there'll be a lot there, too. I'm hoping that our administrator and, and Tom, you all get with Sarasota County and figure out how we can build perhaps a, a better bonding uh, there between the two counties to work together. So um, with that being said, I'm going to open to public comment. I don't have anyone written up or no cards on anyone. So if you'd like to come up to the podium, please state your name, and you'll have three minutes.
Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be very, very brief. Uh, my name's Chris Tanner, and I'm from the law firm of Manson Bolvis Donaldson Varn. Um, I'm here on behalf of Long Bar Point LLLP uh, to provide kind of an informational update on uh, agenda item two, uh, talking about the breach in the wastewater pipe. Um, as Mr. Brownman mentioned, uh, the property that was impacted was permitted by the state as a wetland mitigation bank in 2017. Uh, a number of the environmental impacts uh, were immediately known. Um, it, and some of those were known to be significant. Uh, but the, the kind of the key point uh, I wanted to make today is that the kind of the mangrove die-off line of demarcation um, has not been stagnant and um, has proven uh, to be expanding. Um, as you know, this is no small issue, and it's something obviously we'll be continuing to monitor to better understand uh, and identify and quantify the environmental impacts from the breach. And uh, that's it. Thank you for your time. And we'll point out we've just met today and now for the second time already. It's quite the, quite the day. Exactly. <laughs> I knew you'd been in a meeting all day because I was there with you. So I was like, I'm going to be brief. So thank you all. Excellent. Are there any other public comments? No? Are we taking phone calls? Is there anyone on the phone? We have no phone calls. All right. We have no phone calls, so we will close public comment. And with that, uh, our agenda is complete, so we'll go around the room for some uh, brief uh, commissioner comments. We will start. Uh, where are we going to start? Start with you. Start with yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> I would just briefly say thank Longboat Key for coming out here. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad that our relationship is, is improving. Thank you for bringing us any feedback and for your concerns and your wants and desires. And I uh, look forward to working with you in the future. And, and I will get with uh, the school board and bring them around. So, all right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Commissioner Gold. Thank you. This is this is my first joint meeting, and I really appreciate the opportunity to to be updated on on all the things that are going on, and um, and to see how how uh, well the Longboat Key and Manatee County are working together. Thank you very much. Commissioner Belby, you have no comment. Nope. All right. Work around, Commissioner Williams. Oh, do you want to grab the mirror? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Yeah, just to say that the the one other meeting uh, like this that I attended was a was maybe three years ago. I was my first uh, just on the commission at the time. It was a little chilly uh, between the county and and the town at that point, and it's warmed up substantially. So thank you for hosting today. Thanks for all the good work that's gone on, and you know we look forward to more. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Um, this was a very informative and educational meeting, so thank you all for being here. Yes, I will just echo the same and, and say that, you know, the path to success is always by collaboration. So great meeting, and we will be doing this again when the time is right. Thank you. Mr. Cruz, thank you, and thank everyone from Manatee County for hosting us. I do also want to say um, I went to my first beach renourishment conference with um, Ms. Dominic and Ms. Williams a few, a few months ago, and Mr. Hunziker is an absolute gift to you all and, and pretty much a legend in the state of Florida, so how lucky you all are to have him and uh, learned a great deal. So thank you for having us here. Like, well, you have them too. <laughs> so, <laughs> Manti County, and and uh, and so uh, that's Longboat Key. So, I, I just wanted to thank everyone for being here, and uh, appreciate you. And I'm looking forward to a, a good working relationship going forward, and uh, uh, between the county and uh, and Longboat Key, obviously, um, taking that level to a or that relationship to a better place. And um, you know, so and I, and I think that. Maybe we should encourage others uh, to 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 follow suit. You know, so even even um, I, I think Manatee County Schools uh, needs to look at what we're doing here and uh, and consider uh, what they can do um, to make things more equitable to Longboat Key. Um, as far as I mean, you know, they're taxing more than Sarasota right now. Their millage is higher, 
And uh, I don't think Longbow Key is getting anything out of that. So I wish that I hope that they'll take a serious, close look at it. Thank you. I'll be very brief and just say, you know, I came over from Sarasota County as the county administrator four years ago, and your chair was pretty uh, aggressive in accusing uh, me and Sarasota County of trying to sneak behind the scenes to secure Longbow Key. I, I don't, I don't think that was true. I still don't think it's true. But, but I, I will say from that chilly meeting, the mayor mentioned, you know, I one thing I really enjoy uh, with. Dr. Hopes is when I call his cell phone, he answers. He actually answers it. And when I've said, hey, can we talk? I'm thinking maybe scheduling something a week or two out. And he's like, well, I can be there this afternoon or tomorrow morning. And then the same thing with Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. And so this past year, we've really been able to do some things that we haven't been able to do in the past. And I think that's great and maybe a good start to some other things. Uh, Commissioner Cruz, can I butt in and respond to him real quick? Um, Tom and I had a great relationship of sorts uh, when he was at Sarasota County, meaning that um, it, we didn't have a lot of good um, uh, t the two counties were hardly working together at all and, and I didn't know why and, and Longboat Key was out there all by itself and poor Dave tried to you know, everything he could. And, and it was really very difficult. And um, I got to know Tom on a better basis when we flew to Tallahassee one time together on this little plane. I'm not going to go into the details, but I want you to know I'm going to be doing it again tomorrow, just so you know. Um, so pray for good weather, please. And um, But, you know, I think we have come a long way. And, and I will say that the reason I was not happy with Tom when he went to Longboat Key I'll be honest, was because I wanted him here <laughs> at the time. And, and so, and I don't think I was chair then actually either, Tom, but um, I wanted him here. I, I thought he would do a fantastic job for Manatee way before you, Dr. Hopes. And um, so anyway, it, it's nice to know and, and be able to work with you now with Longboat Key and, and try to move things forward. So thank you for that. I'd just like to add, uh, at least during my tenure, uh, Mr. Harmer and I have had just nothing but a very positive and productive, uh, really working relationship, and, and I've enjoyed it, uh, and I look forward to the uh, years to come. Thank you. All right. Did you have any other comments, or was that it? No. All right. Well, thank you all for, for being here. I think this was very productive. Yes, I did. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, have a safe trip home, and uh, always feel free to reach out whenever you need anything from Manatee County. Thank you. Okay.